two of the art school live streams. Uh, we are about to get busy <laughs> reviewing some art. Um, I hope everybody's doing great. I hope you've had a good weekend so far. I hope you had a good week. Good productive week. I sure did. And um, yeah, it's time for another episode of the Art School Live Stream. So, for those of you watching a little bit later on YouTube, that might be one of the why, why, why am I saying this five or six, seven hour long video? What's this gonna be? Well, these are streams that uh, that I host with uh, with students, with my students, every single weekend, um, and students of the Art School program. So you can find more information about that down in the description below. But essentially, if you're a, yeah, you're a student of the, the 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 mentorship option, you can attend these streams for an entire year or more, maybe <clears throat> every week. So um, yeah, you just you can show up every week, submit your submit your assignment, submit your your personal piece, submit your questions. If you don't have any any of the other two. And, uh, and I do my best to, uh, to give feedback on it. All right, who we have in here now that I can see everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know, the first one, I had to say, uh, to mention the, the stress before getting, uh, getting your stuff reviewed. Like I, I get it, you know, I've gone to, uh, I've gone through the same thing. Uh, you know, at work when you have like, um, when you have like the daily standups where everybody kind of gathers around and then you're, you're, you're like, all right, let me show you what I've been working on. And then everybody's there to just give you feedback and essentially just destroy your art, right? So yeah, it, took, uh, it takes a little while to, to get used to that. Hopefully the feeling left afterwards, always positive, like reassuring and, and, and hopeful. At least that's the goal. So, so yeah, we have, we have like an average amount today. So that's good. Um, I'm guessing around six hours, maybe. Right on, so let's get started. I did have a good week, Gailey. I hope you did too. So I have started learning three-point pers uh, perspective from term to class. This was my first time drawing three-point perspective. For the first part of the class, I drew along what you were making in the class. And then I added some different things to the drawing. To see if I could do it myself. Um, please let me know if I have this right. If the basic structure is good, I will start adding details uh, detail next week. I've been looking at too much crypto news. All I see is the temple of Ethereum. Da, 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 da. Um, very nice. Very nice clean lines in here. All right. So three point perspective. We still have all the, all the, the lines in here kind of showing. Vanishing point looks to be like up here, so way outside of the canvas. And uh, this one back here. Right on. So cool, very dynamic um, perspective going towards one vanishing point, but also in three point perspective. So you still get like the height because uh, we can see part of the sky here. So it feels like an imposing building. Um, So the tricky areas here we're gonna be um, uh, distancing, like placing these at equal distance. So we'll check, you know, to make sure that uh, that this is right here. Uh, I'm guessing, is it? Yeah, it might be. It's just like maybe like uh, the other one here would be would help to to solidify like the pattern. Because otherwise you could like somebody could look at this and be like, oh, but this this is wider and this is too short. I'm pretty sure you measured it because it looks like if I place this one like pretty close. Yeah, I think that would kind of work. But uh, but the way to do this real quick, let's say uh, we split these in half. It seems like maybe that's what you did already. Uh, so the vanishing point going well, almost right through it already. Boom, boom, boom. Oh yes, there we go, Gailey. Yeah, so the other one here, the center will be kind of like this. Yeah, so maybe, you know, you, you might be able to see this one. You might be, you definitely will be able to see this one. So this one would be nice to add, but uh, yeah, good job measuring the, the distances. No problem here. 
Uh, so that one is usually tricky, but you nailed it. So moving on to the next tricky bit, uh, those cylinders here. So tricky, tricky to draw cylinders that uh, that look like, you know, like the, the ring here is in proper perspective. Like it doesn't look too flat or doesn't look like off perspective. Uh, like maybe it's not flat, but it's like slightly slanted. You probably measured them properly. So trace a square first in the right perspective. Find the center, X marks the spot, and then trace using the perspective lines, the vanishing lines, a lines um, crossing the center here and doing the same thing, going to the other vanishing point here. And then we have one point, two point, three point here. All of these that we can kind of connect into a perfect ellipse. If you don't know, if you can't make a perfect ellipse, use Photoshop. There we go. That's a perfect ellipse. And uh, my square is way off anyways, but um, I'm pretty damn sure that you did it exactly like that. Because that, uh, those big pillars here, they look really good. The only thing, the only thing that seems a little bit off would be like the height of them. That, is that true or not? Like I'm getting, whoops. For some reason, for some mysterious reason, this one feels a little shorter, but maybe not. Maybe it's just my eyes lying to me. Those bastards. Let's see, so vanishing point maybe here. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. Alright, so touching the touching here, touching here, the base. Well, never mind then. That's my eyes lying. Good thing I checked. So no problem there. Uh, oops, I should have done that too here for the top of the roof. Yep, the roof of these little. So maybe, maybe this contributes a little bit to. Um, my line might not be exactly on the vanishing line. The vanishing point though. Seems pretty close. So maybe that's it. You know, maybe just the roof here kind of not lining up exactly as it should. I think the tip of the, the roof does though. So yeah, that lines up. So yeah, maybe like this is a little too much here. Um, minor detail. At least I found something, right? Uh, and usually that's that's it. You know, that's the those are the hard bits. Uh, everything else looks really good. Really, really good, Gailey. You even measured the distance for these properly, too. Hell yeah. Crushing it. That looks great. Um, I might recommend maybe some um, some more... Just some more details in here just to influence the scale or to, to let us know um, the scale of the of the area a little better. Like, we, we get an idea with, like, the stairs here. But, you know, could be stairs for, like, a... A mouse could be stairs for a person could be stairs for a giant who knows um like these structures here feel massive compared to like how tall maybe like a person would be walking up to those uh walking up to those stairs maybe this tall you know if it was a person like that feels huge so and those remind me of um of wells so like they look like really big wells So anything on here that uh, that would kind of indicate that that's not the case, or maybe it is, but uh, but yeah, like some some details to reinforce the fact that you would need details to match a person this big, you know. So let's say you have uh, maybe like super subtle brick details here, like a suggestion of it, and that's for the future. And I don't think you, uh, I don't think you've really gone into like the small small details yet. I don't know if you will, um, but like maybe like torches or like lights or um, or like railings and stuff like that. You know, anything anything that you would find on like a building that would help sell the scale of of the area a little bit better. Uh, that's always nice. Always nice to add. Um, and if anything, like if if this person can feel even smaller, then the rest of the building feels more grandiose as a, as a result in comparison. But, um, but there you go. Very good structure. 
definitely ready to move on to uh two details there you go you you haven't done that yet a bit closer this one here maybe like the base of it But, uh, but yeah, anyways, if you spotted it, that's good. Really good stuff, Gailey. Uh, <clears throat> right, let's save that. Moving on to Alessandro. Uh, oh, you'll see Aria. The, uh, yeah, like I said, <laughs> perspective seems a little scary. And like this, you know, what, what I've been uh, reviewing here, like Gailey's, uh, Gilly's drawing that's it's pretty advanced you know that's like the last the last stuff that we learn in the uh, the perspective class it's three point perspective it's the most complex the most complex that you'll mostly use uh, you know we have there's there's some other ones like four point perspective, five point perspective but those are a little a little crazier um but yeah just kind of like a set of rules and if you know them that's it you know there's no there's really not much else i i, I usually compare to anatomy and how how it's not like anatomy like anatomy there's just so much to learn just never stops so much stuff uh you know you learn construction of the body and then it's just all the muscles that you have to learn all the bones all like you can learn for your entire life but with perspective it's uh it's the equivalent of learning like the the base skeleton but like a simplified skeleton if anything and then there's nothing else that's it you've learned it all and now it's just how you kind of how you create stuff with that um so anyways a lot more scary than it actually is uh, and a lot simpler than most people think <laughs> joe all right alessandro so this week i wanted to start to create my own character so i did a silhouette choose uh, chose a theme Noted down the possibilities for shape language and tried to make a hero shape. Then I wrote down some stuff about personality. Please, any feedback on um, on those would be appreciated. I'll start drawing three different figures after your review of what I did here. Right on. Different silhouettes here, different body types. Uh, the theme is going to be fantasy knights, and then shape language. Um, that's like that's really good. Uh, that's really good hero shape. You know, you have a lot of information in here. Um, and for those, you know, if you're wondering, what, what is this? What is this hero shape thing? It's uh, instead of having like a bunch of references, you know, like a huge panel of, of, uh, of references that you kind of go through every time that you're looking for uh, for inspiration for your design, you know, like a, what else could I add on the shoulders? And then you look at all your references. Instead, you do that ahead of the ahead of time and you collect a bunch of references. You grab a bunch of stuff that you like from them. And then just kind of mash them up into one big hero shape that is going to be a sample. Uh, like if you compare it to video games, that would be the equivalent of like a demo for a game, for the full game. So it's something that really, really uh, represents your the shape language for your character, um, but in just like a small, small like a uh, uh, yeah, a sample essentially. So. From here, you'll be able to take the same shape language, the same proportions, the same uh, the same visual elements, and create and use that use that that language here, those ingredients to create a character out of it. And then, since you're sour sourcing from the same the same thing here, so let's say you know uh, you're you're drawing the the, the chest armor, for example. Like, mm, how what what kind of shape should that that shoulder pad have? Well, maybe maybe that's the shoulder pad right here. Maybe you could take the whole thing. And like that, that shape, like that half uh, rounded box, that's your shoulders maybe. Or uh, or it could be just part of it. Maybe it's the um, this part here, like the point, the, the triangle side. Maybe that's your shoulder pad, um, like from the front. And what, what details do you want to add to that? Well, maybe on the sides here you have these things, or maybe they're not on the side, maybe they're, they're somewhere else, maybe down here. Uh, and then you know you're gonna have like big holes like this whenever whenever you have like a big flat surface maybe you could have that that hole up here 
maybe influencing kind of like the shape of your uh, of your shoulder pads so towards the top maybe dips a little bit uh, and then you have kind of like that line in the center here so that could be another thing that you add for your and so like seen from the side you know like this that could be the start of your shoulder pad and then uh, that's maybe a, like a more literal way of, uh, of applying it but uh, for every every part of the design you would go through like a similar process so if you're looking for inspiration like what kind of shades should I use what kind of smaller details should I use well all your smaller details are here already it's a bunch of spikes you have like bigger bigger spiky things smaller ones like this that, that repeat a little bit more often so that would be cool for like a like trim detail that kind of stuff these would be more like a silhouette defining uh, details so yeah essentially like I said that's that's like your pantry your whole pantry of the ingredients that you have to that you can use to come up with your design so um, so here Alessandro did the silhouette first I chose the theme um, so here are the uh, kind of the, the details of this uh, this design here. So this is like the start of the design process, right? So super strong crab knight, <laughs> brave, make <laughs> makes bubbles when angry, angry most of the time, most most of the time full of bubbles. Um, I want to show the world, he wants to show the world his strength and likes to surprise his foes with big punches. Other things, you know, that, that are cool to think um, about when designing characters is a uh, Still, it still has to do with the background story, but uh, kind of like where they live, where they live always is a good because it allows you to kind of imagine what their life might be like, you know. So, you know, wherever you live right now, imagine that you live in a completely different country. Like, what would it be for you? Maybe you live in a in the jungle, starting now. What is your life like in the jungle where you have no electricity, where you're just like you know, naked and afraid? Uh, you have to survive with with very little in a completely different environment. Um, that's those are really good ways to uh, to come up with cool designs. So you can you could think of a you know your character lives in in a really remote area of the planet and it's really cold there. Like maybe he lives in like Antarctica, you know, like North Pole, whatever. Um, and then there's not a whole lot there, so it's, uh, it's hard to go and to, to go to go to that place. Hard to leave. Uh, so maybe a very very resource restraint restrained uh maybe electricity is tricky too maybe you need solar for that whatever so all all of these d the different setting influence the the needs of your character will influence you know like just the life the daily life of your character so those are really good things to think about or it could be like in a really warm environment where the character really doesn't need much to, he doesn't need to wear much because it gets too hot or maybe it gets so hot maybe he lives in like the desert on like a different planet and he's so so hot that he needs a suit to cool himself down all cool things to think about um, but, uh, but yeah, that's great that's a great start uh, just try to think of things that uh, that will influence the visuals more you know uh, like personality is important too for the, the demeanor of your character like the pose maybe like the the kind of uh, yeah maybe the facial expression the the overall aura that we get from the character but also uh, the environment um, that he's in, that she's in, will also influence a lot of those things. A lot of those designs, elements. But um, so I uh, quickly to go back uh, to this here. Um, maybe you um, you might need some more. Excuse me, in the um, so much smaller details. So here we have like three levels of details, right? So we have like the silhouette. The silhouette maybe could be a little bit more, you know, like looking at all of these these references where you have like really big spikes that define the silhouette quite a lot. Uh, same with the crabs here, like uh, looks like a spider. You know, a lot of a lot of things that a lot of things that are sticking out of it. Um, maybe those horns could be a little bigger, like stick out and define the silhouette of uh, of your hero shape maybe a little more. That's those are the big details, silhouette defining details, and then we go into medium sized details like um, like everything on the inside here, like the different types of uh, what is this like a pad here maybe, 
and this is like a plate. Um, maybe a few more ingredients, like not too, like not not twice as much, but maybe maybe a few more uh, that you could um, that you could select. Because you know, if your recipe, if you're uh, if you're trying to come up with a cool recipe, like a cool design, but your your pantry is pretty empty, like you don't you don't have a whole lot of ingredients in there. You're you're limited in what you can create. So yeah, just maybe like adding a few more ingredients in there. So a few more medium sized details like that's that could be considered medium sized details, but that would be a medium sized detail. Uh, and here, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's like a, a pattern here, maybe like that, more like teeth. You know, to kind of kind of mirror that kind of stuff here. Um, that would be kind of medium sized detail that could that you could then reuse for your for your armor for details on the armor detail or the character or whatever whatever he's wearing um so maybe a few more medium sized details like that uh and then a few more small details too like, like these small things that's cool and then you have like a little bit of a trim there too those are two ingredients right now then you have like another a trim around whenever you have a big opening you have a trim around it um Okay, so that's three medium, uh, three small details. Maybe two more would, would help. Like, uh, I mean, that line here. Yeah. If it were more, uh, a little bit more dominant in the design, maybe that could be considered like a, another small detail. You could trim whenever you have an opening, you have almost like something's inserted into something else. Or medium-sized details could be like a, maybe there's like a at the tip here there's like a little like it opens up to I don't know to some to something else like those would be small details or maybe it's a, it's a, like bolts in here maybe you know to to hold this whole structure together you need some bolts maybe it could be like Tech details mm. could be uh, could be uh, stickers too. It could be you know whatever. But those would be like the small details. Maybe a few more just to so that you you're not starved when uh, when working on your full design. But that's what I got for you. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Moving on to Aria. There you go. All right, so I am doing great. Hope you're well too. I'd like some feedback on a finished piece. This uh, one kind of got away from me while working on it. I wanted to give her an intriguing, unique look. Hence the nose, colors, and um, the nose. Oh, uh, colors and gills. It's also First for me to start off with the background, I tend to finish the character straight up and then quickly make use of the background. This time I tried adding some bounce light and skin detail and I gotta say I'm quite proud of it all. Could you share what you think about the composition, background, detail, shading, character, design, and anatomy? Anything else? <laughs> Everything. Excellent. Let's check this out. Hmm. Little Mermaid Sister. Character first, anatomy always uh, was the first thing that we're gonna check. Um, just got really good anatomy. So proportions feel pretty good. Uh, are there any issues here? Uh, I mean, let me, <laughs> let me try to sit like her. I just want to see what happens to the clavicle when you go like this. not so much to do with the anatomy maybe more the uh, the gesture like she could have maybe more weight on uh, on this arm on this arm um, it's almost like uh, 
that would change a lot though so yeah you know take that with a grain of salt it's not it doesn't look broken it's just like for it to look maybe more more comfortable like for her to look more natural uh having kind of like the 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 this arm here hold most of the weight uh of her torso so like the, the back would kind of go follow along here so it'd be more like more like this instead like she's pumping out her chest right so i think it would be more comfortable the other way around where you're like this and like the chest mostly relaxed, the stomach is kind of kind of in. Uh, I don't think you need to change the the um, the head too much, but uh, yeah, having that shoulder maybe a little bit higher might make her look more comfy. That's more like a yeah, more gesture. Um, but yeah, proportions are good. Um, Shading is pretty solid too. Yeah, love love this here. That was shiny. Um maybe too shiny. You know, like in between the scales, maybe it'd be cool to have a, to have that shine kind of stop. Just to indicate that the 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 scales themselves have some um some some thickness. Otherwise it feels like it's all like completely flat. Maybe that's the case, you know. Kind of like a fish, there's always kind of like a coat of, of slime on top. <laughs> See, maybe that doesn't look as shiny anymore. Maybe it looks more like, like dragon scale, so... Yeah, ignore ignore what I said. Yeah, so... Uh, it'll Yeah, it'll have to be mostly about um, the composition. So I think that's the... The biggest issue here, colors were pretty good uh, for like a night scene. The lighting, the lighting is convincing. Um, already said the anatomy, the, the anatomy, the pose, the character herself feel pretty good. So, what would be the biggest impact? I think um, in here, biggest impact. If you were to change it the composition and maybe the lighting a little bit yeah i think those two things will make a big difference so um let's start with uh with composition a few things that um that we try to to avoid when uh, when laying out like visual elements is to create to create unwanted patterns. Um, patterns attract a lot of attention. Uh, patterns are not as natural in nature. And you know, if you look outside of your window, if it's like a forest, you're not going to see any patterns. It's pretty chaotic. Uh, and that's, that's what we're used to, essentially. So whenever you see a pattern, let's say you, you see like a, like maybe like poles or like fence that has a, a bunch of sticks, you know, like equally lined equally uh, placed apart, uh, that's going to stand out from the from the rest of the environment because that's going to be a pattern. It's, oh, that's unusual. That's something that's that's structured in a chaotic nature. And so we're kind of, um, I guess, genetically inclined to, to notice patterns more and be more interested by them. So patterns like this, like lines, lines in, uh, in art, very easy to misuse. So like this line here with that line there that creates a strange pattern like this one here too and then all the all the lines kind of going in that same direction uh that's a pattern here you have kind of the same idea with those the the, the flow of the water here all those lines kind of going in the same direction here again I'm, those the ones going down not as not as big of a deal because yeah i mean it's water you would kind of expect to go down but uh, but these patterns here like the, the patterns in the hair all going in the same direction that does attract a lot of attention in the wrong areas that's what it does it attracts a ton of attention in this area of the painting and usually you try to attract attention where your focal point is you know focal point for most most paintings that include the character is going to be the character itself um if there's only one character usually that's going to be the character's face so this would be 
the uh, the focal point. This sh should be the focal point. Um, but right now, like I'm distracted by all of these all of these lines creating all these patterns. It's it's exciting for the eyes, and so we look at that first. M most people, I would think. Don't need to scroll down here. Um, so so avoid those essentially. Uh, one one thing you could do here that would that would help break uh, break that pattern would be to just kind of change the the line of the rocks back here. So anything that doesn't follow that doesn't follow the like the sill whatever hair would would do it. Maybe just a little bit more organic here and this stuff sticking out some more. There you go. Maybe there's a uh, some rock faces that are catching the light a little bit more directly. So and again to like you had the right idea here, right? To uh, have kind of like this little trim and this little rim light all around the rocks to to separate the rocks from the 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 dark sky behind, because the these two colors do share very similar values. So yes, it's it's definitely a good idea. Um, you could do it maybe something that looks more a uh, little bit more natural. Like what happens when it's just one line like this, like of equal size, equal length, not like the equal um, thickness the whole time. The whole way it suggests the rocks themselves are more like a like a flat panel you know like a cutout and so the light is getting caught on the the edge of the the cutout so varying that um that line or varying that highlights should help kind of break that up a bit so let's say we just select a bunch of random ones here like faces that might be pointing towards the moon so kind of a Similar to what you did here, like a line, but more like a broken up line. Something that's not continuously, or not continuous. 100% or, uh, or if it is, have a change with thickness. Maybe there's another little bit here that catches the light. Right. Could uh, could be better, but um, yeah, something like that. So could be a little brighter in some bits. Um, but now at least it's not following the hair quite as much. Um, and here, like if this is water too, water will usually. Um, submit to anything that's harder. So these rocks here, if uh, the rocks kind of sticking out, the water will kind of just go around it. And, uh, and that I think that would be cool also to have to have that water, like the, the thickness of the stream vary a bit more. Because this might look more like ice. Mm. If, Like when it when it hits like a, a flat surface like this, like it water tends to flatten and then it kind of, but uh, like it, uh, you'll you'll see it fall. How should I explain this? Uh, it's kind of like it. I don't think it would maintain its thickness here. It would probably get a lot flatter here and then kind of flare out as it as it falls and kind of mixes with air a little bit more. So. Yeah, anything that's kind of facing the top here, anything that's kind of flat, maybe make it a little thinner and have the water kind of submit to the rocks and go in between the rocks. So the rocks might be blocking the view in some in some bits, in some areas here. And the water kind of has to go around and flow. Also like this one here, this stream here goes there and then behind that rock and then continues flowing. Maybe that rock catches some of the lights of the moon as well. Maybe that one too. Uh, maybe you can put another rock in front, this one here. So the water has to kind of go behind it, maybe. Uh, so just breaking up the the size and like the width here, I think it's going to help make that feel a bit more organic, more natural looking. Mm. And, yeah, and then for the hair here, I think uh, just having the, the the curls go in different directions 
maybe this one goes up maybe that one and maybe they're not at like equal they're not really at equal distance but like getting rid of that pattern you know like ching 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 kind of like the same thing repeating so maybe you merge two of these or create like a bigger one and then these ones at the top here maybe they curve in the opposite direction feels more natural feels more chaotic more uh, unpredictable the line here straight line if there's winds need a lot of wind to be able to move this big mass of hair so maybe that just goes straight down again to get rid of that those lines those parallel lines maybe this goes down and then out maybe the tip here is a little bit more more fluffy more likely to to be caught in the wind then the roots of the hair it's a little bit more heavy uh so that's it for uh, composition getting rid of those getting rid of those those patterns that you see here uh, and then um and then for the lighting the lighting the lighting There's not going to be a whole lot of light in here, right? It's going to be mostly the moon. Um, so I will make the moon feel pretty bright because uh, the scene is not too dark. So that light source here must be must be pretty bright or must be bright enough. Maybe a little bit of glare. And then and then um, I would use kind of the same color of the moon as the moon, like this blue light blue tint to uh to create the highlights here for your for your character mm. yeah no no that's fine i think your highlights are fine i think the shading is fine on your on the siren of the, the fish lady but um uh, it's the other lights in the in the rest of the scene so this is going to be the main light source and then that light is going to bounce psh, so you're going to get a little bit of bounce lights, a little bit, and then you could amplify it as like a, your artist, artistic decision, uh, just so that you have something to light up here, like in the, in the opposite direction. So like that tail, all of that would probably be completely dark, completely black, you know, if there was no bounce light whatsoever in the scene, if the, if the moonlight was the only light. So for this to be visible, like you would need this light particle here to go like, whee! bounce on on the water maybe and then back up there so maybe you could push that so a little bit more maybe a little bit more bounce light from the bottom here from the water uh same thing to eliminate like the, the bottom of these rocks so that we see some of the details maybe a little better water is pretty reflective so um and the idea is just to get rid of those like really really dark areas in the painting essentially avoid like pure black unless it's around the focal points otherwise like always keep it a little brighter than that and if you don't know well why would it be brighter bounce lights bounce lights usually a good a good answer to those those kinds of things here so all these rocks you know all the all the sides of those rocks that are pointing down and pointing to the water they could they could get a little bit more lights because of that uh, that, re that light reflection Maybe the water itself could be a little glowy to add more light. Oops. Mm. That's, that's too much, but. Uh, That's too much, but but more light, a little bit more light. <laughs> Anyways, all oh, the house. Um, most of this was just trying to get rid of those those patterns that uh, that kind of influenced the the composition in a weird way, and then a little bit of light to just bring in more light in here. Um, last thing maybe colors 
<laughs> uh, it feels like a pretty uh, cool painting, cool colors overall. So a little bit of warmth always always helps to get that balance more between the warmth and, and cool colors, warm and cool colors. Um, the only thing that's warm in here is her, you know, like the her purple is just a little bit warmer than the rest of the rest of the painting. So maybe you could push that in the hair, warm that up even more. Maybe a little bit more, a little orange-ish, a little pink-ish in some of those uh, some of those highlights. Maybe that's too much. Maybe just some of the reflections here, or something to warm up this area, so that again the eye goes to that a little bit more directly. Like the yellow of the eyes, good uh, good touch. The, the red lips too. But maybe something that's that's a little bigger, something that, that would command more attention. Oh, that helps. Moving on to Dennis. You're welcome, Aria. All right, still getting more practice with drawing full bodies. The focus for this week was clothing. I drew clothes over a model and did some design work for an original character. Please provide any feedback regarding the draw, um, the draw overs and my design. I provided copies of the model to help you point out any mistake. Right on. Nice. Right. Got some uh, some fold studies in here too. Uh, I think the biggest thing in here will be just um, like the the values of it. Just make sure that it matches the um, this guy better. Like you have a really good preview here in this little uh, <laughs> little speedo, little uh, little thong. <laughs> Is that a thong? I hope not. Um, but you kind of see the range, you know, of, of values that you would have for a, a colored, a colored shirt of the same color. So that would be kind of like the dark, the, those, the, those would be like the, the darkest part of the folds, not hard light. There we go. That and then medium would be kind of like that, like the in between and then the highlights be this bright. So those would be kind of like the color that you would, that you should ish use some um, for your for your shirt here so your shirt this looks a little bit uh, radioactive very saturated compared to uh, compared to this stuff here so if we just use the medium color for everything it should just fit the reference a lot more if you use similar values shadows you use go darker and we're going to shade this guy just as if he was not wearing any shirt so a little bit of chest definition here, because he's yoked. Uh, a little bit of shadow underneath the armpits. So you would start with something, you know, something kind of like that, and the highlights. Top of the chest, top of the shoulders. Um, and then yeah, so from here, the kinds of uh, the kinds of fold that you would normally have, the shoulders are pretty relaxed, so there's not going to be a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of fabric kind of bunching up up there. You know, it kind of lays flat on the shoulder, just like mine right here. Uh, you might get some underneath the armpit here, where the like the sleeve itself kind of you know pushing against the rest of the t-shirt would uh, kind of gather up in folds. This you would get some folds there. Elegant these folds. This looks like hair. Uh, so some folds in the armpits, and then um, and then since he's he's pretty he's pretty big, pretty muscular, 
uh, the back itself, you know, as you kind of push against your waist like this, it flares your, your lats out. And so the lats in the back here would be pushing against the shirt kind of backwards. You know, it's as if someone's like pulling the shirt from the back. Uh, and his chest is kind of pushing against it. So tension in the back, tension in front because of the chest. So you're going to get maybe some, some fold here kind of going from the back to the front and contouring the chest. Something uh, like that. And then maybe at the bottom, if it's loose, you know, if this is like... Uh, if the, the, the bottom of the shirt is a little a little looser, or if it's slim fit, maybe not, but if it's looser, maybe some of the fabric here will kind of bunch up at the bottom. As the bottom of the shirt rests on his, um, on his waist. So yeah, for this guy, it would be very similar, except, uh, yes, you would have a lot more fold here on one side because he's squishing one side more than the other. Other than that, though, the logic would be very similar. But values, 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 so that it doesn't look like he's, uh, he's glowing. And uh, here we have a constructed character. Looks very good. Good proportions. Um, kind of inspired by this guy, I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was good. That's really good. So he's wearing a jacket like this. Here maybe 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 adding some um, just some details around. Uh, maybe you're not done yet. Uh, I'm guessing you're not done. All right. So yes, for this guy here, uh, you know, going off this uh, this this fold uh, weekly theme. You know, we could definitely add add some more here, just like we did, just for the shirt. Same idea. So the armpits here, maybe some bigger fold. You know, if this is like a, a thicker jacket, you wouldn't have those those small, fine folds that you would have maybe with silk. The material is thicker, and the folds are also thicker. Some fat folds here around the. Side here, so fold again, just like uh, just like this guy here. You know, he's bending one way. That's where the fold accumulates. So maybe, yeah, maybe some here. Defining the silhouette, maybe that can kind of stick out there as it accumulates. Maybe not that much. Um, same thing with the pants here. Uh, if he's wearing a belt, and the pants themselves, like the pen design. Uh, you, yeah, you don't have much in here. Yeah, if they're sweatpants, then no belts, <laughs> nicely. Uh, but maybe still a like a trim, you know, for the the like elastic around the waist. Maybe you could you could add that in here, like that would generate some folds because the elastic is just taking like a, a big a big circle of fabric and kind of just making it making it smaller. So introducing a lot of folds as a result. That could add some nice nice touch in here at the waist. Oh, that, that looks, that looks nice. Maybe I would adjust this hand because that just the fact that like the fingers follow the size, the silhouette of the, the leg. Again, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a pattern. Like this is noticeable, just also because it's just stiff. It looks it looks a little a little too stiff for for this guy. It looks so chill, this dude. He's got like the stiff hand. So maybe just just bend the fingers a little bit. I think that might. 
All I need. Chill out, dude. There we go. He's bending the fingers. No, he's relaxed. Changed his whole his whole attitude. Yeah, Dennis. Come to the house. Really cool so far. <laughs> I like the I like the shape. I would push that even more. Like uh you know it's it's kind of like not a circle. So you have kind of like this this thing here. I don't know what you could do with that, maybe. Make it more unique. Yeah, I don't know. Or not. It just seems like such a nice opportunity to, to really have like a unique, unique silhouette. Just thanks to the hair. I personally would push it a little bit more. Anyways, hold that house, dude. Very cool stuff. <clears throat> like maybe, um, I don't know what he's about, uh, what his character is about, but maybe like the, the, the shape of his hair is influenced by that. I don't know. <clears throat> you got it, Dennis. My pleasure. Coco, your turn. What do we have here? Ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. Uh, so this week I've done changes to the metal parts of her costume. I decided to delete the last one and to start from scratch. Now I'm happy with the result. At least it doesn't look like rubber. I think it kind of looks more metallic. Yeah, definitely does. Um, also remove the rubber boots. I will be happy if you take a look at the makeup parts of her body. And all those parts in, um, are all of these in good perspective. I need to finish the guns and the background still. Let's take a look. And this is a, uh, it's come a long way. Yes, that's much better. Way better, dude, way better. It just makes more sense. You know, like you can clearly see the layers now. It's like, oh yeah. So this, you know, she wears this first, kind of like her socks, the equivalent of her socks. And she puts the boots on top. There you go, a nice, nice little touch here with the the soles. Kind of create, yeah, kind of tying the boots and uh, the rest of the outfit together. Like, yeah, these boots are also made by the same person, who's a big fan of rainbows. Similar shape language. I really like this uh, like the stripes here that you use. You see, almost I don't know it's not the same thing, but you, you, they're kind of repeated here on the gun too. Maybe that's something that you could push more on the gun. Like, uh, I mean, these uh, are these uh, are these sticking out or are they like hollow, like a hole and then a light inside? I'm guessing that's what it is. Right? Maybe to have something like that on the gun, that'd be cool. better job uh but yeah again it's just something to tie to tie the design together like the guns match the outfit um one thing that's a little, throwing me off just a little bit here in um in the design it's the the perspective of those little bars here so uh, it's tricky to get it right but um but i would recommend that you take a look at like the direction of the shoulders or the direction of the breasts uh, the hips too, you know, like imagine the her hips are maybe here, here. Take a look at this line, take a look at that line. Uh, they're kind of parallel and try to match those little lines here with that as much as you can. Of course, like the torso is, is rounded, right? It's not, we're not like a block. But, uh, but the front of the chest here is usually pretty flat. So, you know, you could line them up and it would probably look pretty accurate. 
maybe introduce a little bit of a curve towards the edges. Like, uh, mm. Contouring the body. And then I would also maybe indicate that uh, like the left side here is a little too short. All right, so you could add some, some more here. Make this symmetrical. Cause that's the tricky part with uh, with armor design, especially stuff that's uh, that's hard. That's supposed to be uh, the same on both sides. You really don't want to make any mistake in the perspective, otherwise it's very obvious, um, and it makes it look broken. But if you get it right, though, it looks really good. So, so you kind of have like think of this as like one continuous line that goes around the torso. Like imagining that the torso itself is just this big cylinder. That's really what we're doing here. So imagine like a line here going across. That's the center of the body here, right? Belly button down there. Uh, and then those lines here, those details, are essentially just parallel lines to that one, to that one here. Here, 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 the bottom there. If the torso changes direction, oops. Same layer once again. So if the if the cylinder shape bends a bit, that's fine. Now it changes direction, so now we can see the bottom. Um, so the curve will change at some point, right? Curve, curve. Maybe here it's straight, and then starts to curve downwards. Just got to adjust the perspective here properly. So that's why you know, like, uh, getting good at those those basic, uh, being good. At uh, drawing those basic um, those big basic volumes in space and being able to bend them and stuff, it's very very useful that kind of stuff. Like, you use it for everything. And so here, see, so had those lights now, following those, following that curve and down here. You can add some more lights, following those same, uh, those same guidelines, the same logic here. Any time you have a line. Anytime you have something going like this around the torso, think of a cylinder instead. So maybe this one here goes a little too high. Maybe from this angle, maybe uh, curve like that instead. And then maybe down here it kind of switches to be a curve that points downwards. So it's not easy to uh, to spot this. Uh, but uh, but now at least I think it should uh, the structure should work a little bit better this way. Here it still feels a little weird. Roughly. The boots look good. Yeah, perspective of the boots look good to me. Pose that we've seen before, pose a lot better now. Nice pose, nice, nice and dynamic. Um... Yeah, so just make that look more metallic. Maybe we could add some some shine. Some extra shine, so kind of looking at, at this thing here. Where's the shiniest part? Kind of right down the middle. So we're gonna continue the same thing here. A little shiny, a little, a little darker on the inside here, and then it gets shiny again towards the bottom because it's reflecting part of the boot, maybe. dark again because it's reflecting the dark background. 
so maybe a little bit maybe adding a little bit of, of shine to your metals or if it's more like a like brushed metal could be instead um looking what you had before and instead yeah punching out those corners making the corners here catch a little bit of extra light everything sharp catches the lights some more kind of what you did here but just more so we can see it better from a distance um yeah so and the biggest though is uh, is really this you know making sure that the details here remain consistent with the, the perspective that feels like those details are following this the, the the roundness of the torso and uh i think it helps to have this maybe next to it you know it's just like a simpler representation of your of your more complex torso uh and then you can kind of plan your details on here and then you know try them out try them out first and if you like it then you apply them for real with the shading and everything something like that hope that helps it's coming along great man uh... Moving on to Louise. Ask away, Coco. As uh, I'll let you type as I read uh, Louise's um, submission here. So although I did not think I was going to finish my summit on time, here it is. Yay. Image one. I relied on your suggestions regarding the water city and I adjusted the, uh, the size of the windows and the gate on the left wall. The basic lighting scheme works. Number one right here. Ooh, that's cool. If you're looking at a, a thing in perspective like this, yeah, is that right? Would the reflection also be mirrored or would continue down here following the same perspective? Mm, I'm not sure. Mm, my brain tells me you're right, but, or well, my eyes tell me you're right, but. I've never thought of this before. So it's basically like what happens to the reflection, you know, in the water here. Does it continue? Or does it bend here as if we're just witnessing the distortion in real life? I'm not sure. Because if you were to look at this mm, enough, enough thinking about it, just find a reference. Uh, water reflection three point perspective. see what would happen here you know if uh if like this this windmill was distorted just as much as you like if it was tilted towards um towards the towards the vanishing point in the sky would the reflection also distort the same direction it would be like a continuous straight line mm. and none of these examples help <laughs> they're all completely straight or more like two point perspective come on not one. Mm. Mm. Let me 
religious buildings. I must find out. None of this is helpful because all of this is just two point perspective. Three point perspective, come on. There has to be one somewhere. Ah, oh, there we go. There we have it. All right, so I think you're right. It goes towards the bottom. The curves. Hmm. All right. Yeah, there we go. We have this phenomenon here. So go. This one here tilts towards the right as it goes towards the top, and this one here tilts towards the the right again as it goes towards the bottom here of the reflection. There we go, we have our answer. I doubted you, but you wrote right. So it does in fact do this. Oh yeah, now the, the window size. Now this building feels a lot smaller in comparison. I mean, it still feels like these are more like door sizes. Uh, door size than a... Uh... I think there's like a hair in my... <laughs> I can't get it. I'm trying to spit it out this whole time. Get out of my mouth! Um... So, the only thing I have still... The only issue that I have with this is that... Um, is that this it's about the same size as this like if you were to take this door this door frame and push it back in the scene lift it up far away from us like it would be about the same size here maybe smaller so the only thing I'd say is that this is either too small uh, too big for the windows or this door is too small but probably the door is fine looking at this entrance here looking at the, like, the size of the, those doors uh, the size of those stairs so probably it's these here that are too, too tall. Maybe just chop them in half, make them smaller. Maybe it's like a little, uh, little roof above them. And now they're just smaller. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, this looks nice. This looks really good. Love the shadow too, it's a little shadow. Very nice. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right, um, Alan, say, Alan saying the, that thing here almost makes it feel like a little, uh, like a little ledge, you know, that you can almost walk on, walk on, so, like, that line here might help suggest that they're more like doors, that's true, yeah, if you think that out, I think that, that sells it better. Maybe like just keep the line underneath again, just like a uh, like a window frame kind of thing, like a, just architectural detail. Uh, yeah, very nice, very very nice about this. So I mentioned to I struggled a lot to draw some cylinders in three point perspective, but they look quite bad. Perhaps I should have kept the construction uh, cylinders in three point. Perspective. So. Like some of the, like the majority of these, I don't think I would bother with too much. You know, like those kinds of cylinders, you'll never draw. Uh, the only time you'll draw them is when you construct like a, a scene that requires re requires that in perspective. Like if your perspective is really distorted, uh, which I'm guessing is what you what you were doing here, like some very distorted, you know, kind of like kind of like this cylinder here but like on steroids, right? Like this one here, super stretchy, super deformed because of the uh, the perspective. I, I wouldn't bother um, practicing stuff that is the effect of like a lens distortion, a perspective distortion. Instead, yeah, I would just, you know, good old, you can, you can introduce a little bit of perspective in your cylinders, like maybe the cylinder kind of goes away from you a little bit, a little bit of uh, a little bit of foreshortening this way, so one side is slightly bigger than the other one, 
you can tell, you know, that this kind of this, this kind of goes um, like this part is further away from us than this side here. So a little bit of distortion like that, sure. Uh, but I wouldn't, you know, do like uh, the extreme versions where you have like the top of the cylinder here and then the base of the cylinder because it's flat on the horizon. We can't see the base. And then you just get like this weird wonky looking cylinder. Uh, not as useful. Like if this is the result of your construction for your scene and it's kind of necessary for everything else to work, then sure, you might end up with a cylinder, a cylinder like this, but I wouldn't, just, I wouldn't practice just drawing those. It's probably not going to serve you a whole lot. Other than in very specific um, cases like this. Um, something bugs me. You said that the object becomes smaller farther away, but I don't understand why my perspective guidelines look wider. Um, please see the area highlighted in yellow. I tried to adjust this in image 4, but I don't understand it completely. Why my perspective looks wider? You mean as it gets closer here? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that particular question. But, uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely um, some strange things happening in this room. Uh, uh, um, you should, like the best way to, to draw anything, you know, in a scene like this is to, um, first of all, make sure that everything follows the same vanishing lines. Everything. There's nothing in here. Um, like for, for the purpose of this exercise, that should be out, uh, that should be diverging from, from that rule. So let's say you have, uh, where's your vanishing lines in here? Let's try to find it. Maybe a horizon somewhere around here. So let's say those are your vanishing points, right? And then the top one will be somewhere around here. lower anyways vanishing points vanishing points vanishing points um everything in here should be lined like everything that's that's flat on the horizon uh should be lined up with this this line here so everything that's going towards that that uh, that point essentially so that wall here that's not it you know this entire wall this entire wall here goes towards that point Right, the lines that define the outside of the walls converge with to to that point here. So you would use that point for everything that's on this wall. Um, so that's the windows, the top of the windows here. There you go, that's fine. The top of the wall itself. It's broken here, but it looks like you you know you were following the right line. Uh, the bottom of the windows, yes, check. The top of the shelf, yes, check. The bottom here, the. Uh, the ground a little bit off, but mostly mostly on on uh, on the line. And then for the frames here, yes, 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 all of that works. All the little handles, the little drawers. Uh, same thing with the bed here. Same thing with the wall down here. The legs follow the same thing here too. That's fine, fine, fine. The only thing that's not fine is the this the top here of the bed. So if we trace the line to these corners here. Well, what do we have here? We have a slightly different square, right? So it starts this wide when it's closer to us. And then as it goes away from us towards the vanishing point, it gets narrow, narrower. And so you could start with that, you know, like 
kind of build a box this way, a big box, and then you know you can add the legs, add the legs after, like split this up here, adding the legs. Um, for the height of the cushion, same thing here, we can use this vanishing line. So the thickness would be, let's say the thickness is in, uh, in light blue. That would be everything that's in between those lines here. It's a little thicker towards the, um, towards where the head would rest here. Um, and uh, this line here, kind of going, going uh, in a different direction, that's not correct. So that one is not right. And then for everything that's on this wall, you would use the other vanishing point because that wall here is going towards that vanishing point. So we can just check in purple maybe. So the top here, bottom, that's fine. The windows, uh-oh. That's when it starts to break. So the other the other side was fine. So the top of the window is fine here. Did you see like the bottom line? It's starting to get a little confusing, huh? Let me pop a new layer here. Vanishing point, vanishing point, vanishing point. Be gone. Alright. So the top of the window is fine. Lining up here. No problem. But the bottom isn't. Bottoms all over the place. So those, you know, that should be all on the same line. The thickness here should be also all on the same line. Going towards the vanishing point. Uh, like these these tables look a little a little bit more like they're like they're floating. So the top of the table again would follow this line here. At least one side of the table would follow. The side that's going towards that vanishing point. That side here, all of that should be following the line. That side here, and then going to the other vanishing point, the other side of the table in red will be following that vanishing line. Which it does, so that's good. So it's just really, uh, it's going to the purple vanishing point that things start to, to break a little bit here. So this one here gets a little uh, a little too wide. And then for the height, go and light green. Everything should line up with that here. So the legs of that, that thing here, the drawer, the cabinet. Yes, yes, yes. The line, the horizontal line, the, um, the vertical line for those windows. Yes, yes. Uh oh, not this one. That one here is a little bit off, but it should be lined up with the rest. Uh, that one's fine. That one's fine here. That one's fine. A little bit off, but it's, it's it's pretty pretty good. This here is um, is stuff just floating around. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Maybe those chairs, are, those tables are floating. Maybe that thing is floating. Because that doesn't seem like it's like laying flat on the wall. It looks more like it's, you know, just in random perspective. Uh, if it's floating, that's fine. I would say maybe it's... No, that's, I mean, that's a painting that would be about this size. It doesn't seem too big at all. Based on like this bed here. You know, like a, a person sleeping here would be like this tall, maybe. So standing up would be about this tall. So that's a pretty small painting. Uh, and then yeah, so let's take a look at the rest here. The vertical lines to see if everything else works. Other windows. Drawer. The little... Yeah, the rest of it seems mostly fine. And then the last thing here that uh, you might want to adjust is just the distance between those planks. Um, it should get smaller, yes, uh, but maybe not that fast. You know, like this goes from really wide to really narrow real quick. Uh, I mean, there's a way to measure it. It's a little little tricky here because it's so close together, but 
you could do it for maybe like half, just like a stripe of things here. So let's say, let's see, you just take that. You could just do it again here in red. Let's say you want the planks to be like, maybe this one here is a little too wide. So let's say you want like half of that, right? So this is going to be your default plank, this one. And you want to figure out how the other ones are going to be, how how wide they're going to be. Uh, well, you just need to find the center of this plank. X marks the spot and then have a line, a vanishing line going through that center, center line from the vanishing point back through the middle as well. Like that. And then we can start to measure this. So starting from the corner going through the halfway point, touching the line on the other side, boom, that's going to be another plank right there. I can do that again, sign from the corner, going through the center, touching that line, boom, that's another one here. And then rinse, repeat. And this way, if I clean this up a bit, Just, just, just. You can imagine, you know, I, I just skipped one, but so that we can we can see them better. Uh, but this way, you know, the planks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're going to be uh, consistent with the perspective this way. And then if you want to, if you want to just extend them, just continue the line all the way to the other side. Boom. You have planks that are equally placed. Um, and then for the character here to make sure that she's not too tall and not too short. Um, I mean, you can do the similar thing we did here with the bed. So let's say like a, a normal person standing next to this, this table or this, uh, this drawer is about this tall, maybe. I don't know, like looking through the window. Yeah. Like maybe the head is right here. Legs. Maybe a little smaller than that. Maybe this tall, maybe the heads right here. Um, to figure out how tall that person would be up there. Uh, well, we have vanishing lines here. So I, I conveniently lined it up with the lines that I already had. And now we can just extrapolate those lines here. So this same person right here. Scale it down so that it fits in the line again. Still. There we go. So a person this tall in here, uh, here will be this tall back there. We can do the same thing that we did to measure the planks in this case. It's a little, a little tricky, but uh, if you could draw a box, a container box for that person. Let's say that's, that's the box here. This box right there. Find the center of it. A vanishing line go through it from above, straight down the middle. And then we do the same thing here through the center here until it touches the line. Boom. That would be it. So this person up there, the feet would be here, the head would be there. Alright, so this person here now is a little shorter because she's she's further away or he she, yeah, she's further away from us, a little higher. Um, but that would be the proportion for a person. That's this tall up here, back here, and then over there, this tall up there, <laughs> that tall. That would be consistent. So one way, another way to measure things. Oh, too many measurements. So you can measure it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do, you know, to make sure that you have the exact right size. That's not true. What I would do, I would just pop a, a box, pop a, uh, a 3D model in there and kind of slide the model around and then draw at that size, <laughs> take a screenshot and, and draw over. Uh, that would be way easier. Uh, but you can measure it, you know, just like I did here. 
So if she was standing up, she'd be about this tall, maybe a little too, a little short, maybe like 10% bigger would uh, would solve it. But yeah, you were not that far off. It's just uh, maybe like a scale overall, like just scale it up like 10%. It's not gonna change too much. She'll just feel just a bit bigger, more in line what she would probably be like. On to the next one. <laughs> what the hell, Louisa? Uh... All right, Cassandra. How are we doing on time? Uh, so it's been a while since I've submitted something, but I'm back. I've been doing the Anatomy 2 exercises. Could you take a look at them and point out any mistakes? Oui. Oui, oui, je peux. Oh. So we got some, um, some sexy looking skeletons here. Cool poses. Ooh. Ooh, skelly. So great exercise to, uh, to practice your anatomy of, uh, your, your anatomy, your anatomy of knowledge, your knowledge of anatomy. In other words, because you are forced to attach them on the structure. And this, in my opinion, is the best exercise to, uh, to get to, to learn those things. So where the muscles attached, when the muscles inserted, like the origin of the muscle, and then the insertion of the muscle. Very, very helpful to draw the the the, the, the anatomy in a bunch of different angles, because then you don't really need to to learn what it looks like, but to learn what it looks like, you just need to learn how it how it functions, like where it's attached. And then, you know, the, regardless of the angle, if you know that, all right, so let's say like the chest muscle attaches, the, the deltoid attaches here, on the clavicle, well, it's going to be the same same thing everywhere. And so regardless of the angle, you'll always be able to know where it starts, where it begins, and then where it attaches on the arm, about the halfway point here on the shoulder, uh, on the humerus, excuse me. <laughs> uh, so there you go. We'd have a delt that would occupy this space approximately. And then from here, about the halfway point here, so that delt would look something like that on the skeleton. And then here, the same idea. So you did a really good job here. And uh, yeah, very, very good exercise for that. I don't know that I'm going to have a whole lot to, uh, to give feedback to here. Uh, yes, yes, I forgot your question. <laughs> Let me go back to that. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for pointing this out, Bruno. Okay, so uh, I want your opinion about an idea that I have on my mind for a long time. So I have an idea about an original character who's actually a mermaid. Uh, but, uh, so I was a big fan of League of Legends and as always, and I always loved to play Nami mermaid character. My question is, do you think, do you think it's better to turn my original character idea as a skin of Nami or to keep it as my original idea? If I turn my idea into a skin of Nami, it can be seen more of a, it can be seen by more people. But on the other hand, if it's my original character, I can create a whole story behind it. Mm. Depends. I mean, it kind of depends what you want to do with it, you know. Um, I don't really favor any, any, any way of doing it. I would say that maybe, uh, if you depends what your goal is, you know, your your goal. So if your goal is to be an illustrator, where you're mostly going to be doing, actually, does it matter? No, it really doesn't matter. Skins of existing characters really good, really good practice. It's uh, it forces you to have some structure because you're following the 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 design rules of of somebody else like another artist right so all the characters from a, from a game will have their own i mean they've been art directed to so all look kind of the same to fit in the same world and so you'll be you'll be playing kind of with the same overall overall guidelines uh so and then you're gonna have yeah like a base body for the character so a general direction already and then what you'll be doing is just tweaking the design, which is it's great if you want to be a, a, a concept artist. You know, that's a lot of what you'll be doing. Do, uh, designing skins for, for different characters, designing different characters from scratch. But most of the time as like a junior artist, it'll be mostly skins that you'll be that you'll be working on. So very, very relevant if you if you want to become a concept artist. So doing skins, very good. Of course, original characters great too. Because uh, then you, you have full control, full creative control, but um, but designing skins, yes, it's good because it allows you to to reach more people, maybe. Um, but
but also it allows you to it's maybe like an easier way to ease ease into um drawing full full characters or just, uh, full original characters because then you're 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 studying a little bit you know as you're as you're looking at how the other artists did did the the original character kind of what they, what they did with the uh, the outfit what what looks cool um, and then you can inspire yourself a lot of uh, from from that so I would highly recommend that you do that actually because drawing original characters if anything is just harder so it's the same idea it's the same process it's just harder because you have more control more chances to mess up so um I think the only thing here that I'll uh, I'll point out is really like the chest in Pectoralis Major because uh, the rest is really good yeah um so and the chest is it's mostly fine too so it's just gonna be uh from one angle i think like that one's fine here nothing to change there uh this one maybe like this section here feels a little too big uh so one guideline that i like to think about to help gauge uh kind of like the, the width of things maybe a little better is um I like the, uh, the, 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 the chest muscle kind of leads nicely usually into the, into the abdominal group. Like it attaches to the, the aponeurosis of the abdominal group. Uh, my dude right here. Perfect for the demonstration. Come over here, buddy. Don't be shy. I mean, no, nah, whatever. You're naked. Just deal with it. Uh, but, uh, but here, see how the. Like the side here of the chest kind of leads into like this connective tissue boing, boing, and right into the 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 into the abs and so if you're not sure like how wide the chest should be uh and that's usually like that little peak here that right above that is where the, the nipple will, is uh, it's gonna go so if you're if you're wondering where the nipple is and, and how wide should this whole thing be uh, yeah, it kind of just goes into, kind of flows nicely into one, uh, one into the other. So maybe the the uh, the abs here could be a little wider towards the top. Um, and then that, what I was pointing out here, like that corner here, where it changes the where the angle changes, uh, that's usually where the the nips are gonna be. Um, so in here, uh, yeah, I think you could just continue that maybe a little higher. We just want to remove some of the mass here because we start with that. And like, if we're stretching the shape here that way, I mean, it will appear to be smaller this way because it's not going to acquire more volume, right? It's the same volume. And so if you squish it this way, it's going to come out on the other side. Um, so that's essentially the logic here, except in your case, it's it's almost like you started with, with a shape like this and you squished it and then the shape just got bigger. You know, you pressed it and instead that didn't move. Ah, solid here and it just got expanded that way. So we're just trying to remove a little bit of the, a little bit of the mass here making that more into an ellipse rather than just a big block. So usually kind of like the bottom here attaches a little higher on the arm. And so we can have can go up like this. And then the top part here attaches a little lower on the arm. In this case, it looks higher, but you know, it's lower, it's closer to the elbow. And so this whole chunk there We'll attach up here and so you get kind of this uh this dip on the chest when it's stretched out so top portion here attaching lower and then the the lower portion here kind of sliding underneath the top portion uh, but yeah as a result it just makes the the chest muscle appear a little a little thinner you know more like that And then 
As a result, that will expose those serratus muscle a bit more. And then the, the back muscle here can slide into it. Whee! There we go, a little higher. That's about it. Like on the other side, it actually works quite nice the way that you did it. So that's all. The rest, you crushed it. Looks really good. Well done, Cassandra. Very well done. All right, shall we take a little break? Yeah, but I think it's about time. Let's save this. We'll be back with Preston in about uh, 15 minutes or so. After this short commercial break. Be right back. Let's keep going. Uh, so, we're resuming here with Preston, man. Who says this week was very busy, so I didn't get as much done and I won't be able to attend the live stream also. I hope your week went well, though. Yes. The only thing that didn't go so well is that I didn't, I didn't have time to finish my weekly tutorial, my weekly video. I'll do that tomorrow. <clears throat> Other than that, yes. Uh, I worked on the new mage, librarian character. I plan to do the back view next week. My main concerns are the anatomy, the design, the rendering. Also, the lighting might look a bit off. Could you point out any problem you see? Yes, Preston. <coughs> <coughs> Where was I? There we go. Save this. All right, so number one, first things first when looking at characters, the proportions, proportions slash anatomy, because that's the most important. <clears throat> probably, probably a few adjustments that I would recommend. Like it seems like she's very tall, <clears throat> but also like her head's very small in comparison to her height. So let's say she's a... Uh, so that's one head. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's nine heads tall. <clears throat> that's tall. That's really tall. Um, so probably the easiest fix here would be to just maybe just make her torso bigger or just make the whole upper body bigger 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 there we go nobody will ever notice she doesn't even notice that now she's got better proportions so <clears throat> that's probably the easiest you know just make the top or just shrink down her legs either way um and then on top of that, I would make the the feet a little bit a little bit longer, just to match the just to match the hands. You know, usually hands and feet have to have to match, otherwise it looks a little weird. Like if you have really small hands and big feet, or vice versa. <clears throat> like it might work in some like more extreme cartoon characters where you have like tiny feet and like you know characters with huge arms and huge hands. That might work a little bit better, but that's almost the only exception. Yeah, because imagine a character with tiny hands and really big feet. That looks kind of weird. So anyways, uh, slightly, slightly bigger, just so that it's about the same, uh, a little longer than the hand itself. If the, the hand is this long, you'll want it to go a little longer for the feet. To keep good proportions. Hmm... Yeah, Emilio mentioning the uh, the balance here a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, if she's in motion, you know, which she which she seems to be, doesn't bother me as much that she's leaning forward a little bit because that's 
that's what walking is really it's just it's falling and then catching your catching your fall with the next foot with the next step and then the next step and then the next step because if you don't step forward you fall on your face um, but that imbalance is what allows you to move forward in the first place so since she seems to be since she seems to be walking i think that's fine uh it's more the it's more like the foot here that's anchored on the on the floor that's that's a little a little more weird so i think the pose would work better if you know if you lifted that heel off of the ground so that she's more like tiptoeing and about to take a next step you know this leg is about to unfold and then catch the fall <clears throat> and then proportion wise other than that maybe maybe something to do in the legs I think the torso works fine now but let's see the knees right here knee knee hips hips should be around around this area um, so maybe that's a little long compared to the other side just a little just a little like maybe if the foot started here instead. So small, um, small tweaks with the proportions here. Um, I don't know. She looks really cool, man. I think you did a good job here. Uh, <clears throat> I like the colors. Um, Should have done this on a separate layer of even um but uh, but regarding the colors though i would still recommend that you introduce maybe more of a gradient in uh in the overall character so like from from bottom to top <coughs> pardon me um so that maybe like the top of the like the top purple is a little bit more exciting purple than the purple down here uh around her feet just so that you naturally kind of guide the eyes towards what's more exciting with the colors and then do the same thing with the yellow too because uh yeah maybe down here maybe the yellow could be a little bit darker and a little bit more shiny towards the top to create the same kind of effect uh actually just push that to to everything in here so the white including uh included the legs too maybe although the legs there's not a whole lot of whole lot of options uh, a whole lot of ways to make that gradient noticeable in such a short distance <clears throat> but uh, but let's see let's see let's see let me remove first these lines get in the way Let's go um but i like already the 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 balance in um uh, in the warmth of the color so you did a really good job here like balancing like a cooler purple with a warmer purple that's very nice I would do the same thing, uh, maybe like push the same same idea, but from from the bottom to the top. <clears throat> so overall, it's a little bit cooler down here, and as you get towards the focal point of the piece, the colors warm up a bit. Go. manually okay <clears throat> set over the top here i'm just gonna do this overall not considering the shadows or anything like that you should consider shadows i'm just trying to go fast <clears throat> And down here, a little darker, a little cooler. To make it not as interesting. And now, 
with the, just the values and the, the warmth and the colors were kind of pushing the eye towards the top, towards her face. Like mind controlling people. <laughs> Let's do the same thing with the, with the yellow here. Real quick. Probably don't need to do much up here. It's already pretty bright. But down there, like going more towards that color here. Like you have it slightly darker behind. Good idea. Let's do that even more. Same thing with, you know, everything else. Uh, it's subtle, but I think it makes a pretty good difference. Um, and you'll find out on a lot of, uh, uh, like we did that all the time on, um, when I was, when I was a blizzard, you know, that's, that's something that all character artists, uh, ended up doing. <clears throat> that thumb down makes a huge difference and just, it helps the read overall of the character. So if you're looking at characters quickly, they're moving fast, you know, in the game. And you want to be able to to spot what's what's important, like around around the face usually, because that's that's what it, that's how the character is going to communicate. That's uh, that's where you'll see like the the, the facial expressions of the character, whatever. Uh, it's a focal point, and so it allows people to just spot that a lot faster. Um, so color wise, that and yeah, um, are y'all mentioning the the neck? Yeah, the neck I didn't mention yet, but yes, indeed, it is quite long. Although. <clears throat> not too long it's just um, the clavicles are kind of missing here so if uh, we erase some of this here and we consider that all right so the shoulder right here traps go like that and on top of the shoulder gonna have the clavicles attaching in the front of the body here somewhere around there so if the clavicles are here The neck really starts a little bit higher, like that. Then it's still a long neck, but it's not like uh, too long to the point where it might be impossible. Like some people will have necks that are, are pretty long. If anything, like I would just push back her face maybe, or like introduce maybe like more of a curve this way. So that uh, the distance from the the chin to like the the larynx is just not is not too long. And curving in the back here too. Flop on a big tube. <clears throat> it's it's a long neck. <laughs> Maybe a little shorter, yeah. I tried, <laughs> I tried to fix it without, but uh, yeah, it probably needs to be a little shorter. Yeah, it feels better. Um, now, other than that, I think uh, so far so good. I love the, uh, I love like the, the different color here for the, the items that are like magical. That's cool, you know, it's, it's very unique. It's, oh, that's different. And then we pay attention to that right off the bat. So nice at attracting attention. Yeah, all the helps. Super cool. Boom. Moving on to Sokena. Sup? I am doing great. Hope you are as well. This is my first try. 
Uh, ZBrush, my first 30 item, and I'm pretty proud. Ooh, that is good. Look at that, even a little, little paw, customized barrel. Custom engraved. That barrel looks good. Very good. Nice planks, nice stylized planks. Flat at the top here. Hell yeah, that looks really good. Um, so I had to work quite hard to this, but it's partially due in fact that I only have ZBrush Court, which takes away a lot of the features you show in the demo. Especially the squeeze deformation of the selection that cuts. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. I thought mm, all of that was shared in ZBrush Core, but maybe not. Uh, as well as a relatively limited number of polygons. ZBrush Core? I don't think they limit the amount of polygons. At least, not that it would matter. Not to a point where it would matter to uh, to you, like working on a barrel. Unless your barrel is like 100 million polygons, which it doesn't need. You know, that could be 1 million and be plenty. Um, anyways, this is taking into consideration. Can you tell me what you think of my barrel? to give you about ZBrush Core. Not really. I mean, that's ZBrush Core is supposed to be... What? Why can't I draw? There we go. Um, ZBrush Core is supposed to be about the same as the real ZBrush, minus the um, the more uh, production-related tools, like stuff like, uh, uh, like the support for different plugins. I don't think it has that. Uh, like, different plugins. Like, let's say you try to uh, let's say you have like a character that's all dressed up with full a bunch of sub uh, a bunch of sub tools on it and then you move the body in one way and you want like all all the stuff all the sub tools to move along with it to deform in the same way without having to do it manually there's like plugins for that uh, so that would be you know, something that's zbrush only zbrush core wouldn't have that but other than that zbrush core is meant to be yeah about the same especially it's meant to be uh like what people would, would need if they want to do like 3D printing. So uh, not necessarily like in a game environment, but more just like, yeah, you, you sculpt something, it looks cool, and you want to 3D print it. Um, so it's more like it's more like all the artistic tools are very similar. I don't think they take out much. Uh, and it's more like the, it's the more advanced stuff that, they'll, that, they, that they will take out. But stuff that usually most people won't use, so... You should be able to do everything with ZBrush Core. Pretty much. Um, unless you're trying to, yeah, to make like a advanced 3D models or something that you want to bake and then put into a game engine or something like that. Um, but yeah, your barrel looks hella good. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything for you other than that. <laughs> a really good job maybe maybe here you know like a doing a little bit of a, a bit a little bit of a pinching tool action here might be nice just so that the gap in between those planks is not as wide because uh, that would probably be able to see through it at this point so just bringing those two together some more like that pinching tool should uh, should help with that No, you did really good. It's one of the best, uh, one of the best barrels I've seen. Awesome stuff. That's all I got. <laughs> Moving on to Maria. I am, I am good, Maria. How are you? Good. I've been working on anatomy from reference both humans and animals. Any major mistakes at this point that I should correct or should I keep practicing? Also, I have a question regarding the streams. I purchased a course in the end of the April 2020. My first post on the stream happened in October. Before that, I was finished my bachelor. So, can I still post on the streams uh, April? Um, I'll have to look into So, the... Uh, your first post in the stream happened in October. Let me 
the count that again. Uh, yeah, so if it's if the first post was in October, uh, I'm gonna go with at least the limit that I have right now. You know, like the six months uh, limit. Uh, there was no limit before, but uh, whatever. Uh, no limit in the sense that you know it's the the year of feedback kind of started at uh, at the time of purchase because. It was it was phrased a little bit differently the way that I was uh, explaining it was uh, like I will uh, the last person that purchased the the purchases like, let's say I stopped you know completely selling uh, the feedback option or completely selling art school uh, at that point let's say that I stopped the last person to purchase it would have a full year ahead of uh, ahead of them and so whoever you know whatever whoever else purchased it before they would get that that's left whatever that that one year plus whatever they've had before and so technically it'd be over but uh but now now it's a little different i mean pricing is different too but um now i allow people to delay up to six months and then start after that um so let's say we do the same thing you know uh, april what it'll be september something like that that it would have to have started and so it would have until september again kind of I, I i need to check again just to make sure but it's something like that so so take the dates that you bought it at at six months and then that's when it start. that's when the countdown started um so there you go that explains it um but 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 let's take a look at the rest here So to go from uh, from this to this, I might recommend that you add like one extra step in between the uh, just essentially just a more elaborate construction, but trying to give like more um, volume to your to your stick man. <clears throat> so turning all of these these straight lines essentially into cylinders, you know, so like. Uh, so there's in the right angle. So they're pointing down. And trying to do that from imagination as much as you can. And then, and then once you're done, once you think you're done, uh, like, all right, so that looks kind of like a person made out of cylinders. But, you know, if you connect, like, all the lines here, you close all those lines, you end up with something that looks looks pretty close to a real human and then after that you can essentially you know subdivide those those cylinders into into muscle groups something that's a little bit more anatomically accurate but uh, but then that step you would do with the reference along uh, the, the reference alongside you but um but this step here trying to do that from imagination as much as as much as you can kind of like looking at the, the overall direction here for like the cylinders but but not much more than that like not looking into the muscles just yet just construction um, because yeah, in the future, you know, for to, to draw characters, that's what you'll be doing. So, just getting that that practice in as soon as possible. Um, and that, but uh, the muscle version, maybe here, can make that a little thicker. The gracilis muscle sticking out a bit more. This one right here, right? Caracillus on the inside. But yeah, very nice otherwise. Very, very nice. Yeah, those animals are really good too. Um I don't know if yeah, I don't know if you tried yet, but uh, but to draw some from imagination, just to uh, it's always good, you know, to to help uh essentially identify where your weaknesses uh where your weaknesses are at. Whenever you have a question, like if you're trying to draw from memory and you're like, oh, I forgot about that part, maybe like take a note, you know, that's something that you should observe a little bit better next time that you look at a reference. So that's the next time you try to draw from imagination, you won't, you won't get hung up on that. But also it's, it was impressive to me, at least that, you know, before, before looking into character, character, um, creature arts or uh, an uh, um, animal anatomy, I could not draw any animal at all because I had no idea of the proportions. I didn't really understand the structure. Um, but the second that you do understand 
just a little bit of the structure you're able to draw a lot of animals that look really really good just from my imagination and i thought it was like cool super power to have gained so i would uh i would try it if i, if I were you see how far up they are or maybe some of them are from imagination maybe they're all studies we'll never know uh but yeah maria very good i lost my work of this week i finished this creature but now i have to do it all over again uh no i feel you so much i happened twice in the last 10 days to me for me last week was my entire youtube video like the entire i overrode the audio track stupid but uh, that never happened and yeah i lost about four hours of work i have to redo it it's not the most fun if you if you have to do it you don't have a choice you have to do it again right away uh and then recently and then yesterday i lost a bunch of brushes that i created photoshop crashed and i, I didn't have time to save them so i lost them all and they were dope but i re, re i recreated them anyways um but yeah i feel you i've uh, i've had that feeling too too often recently it's not a good feeling so we have here a flower spider spider flower spile flow no whatever i'm not gonna try to merge those two words well that's that's properly creepy <laughs> jesus oh i wouldn't even want to kill this thing uh, it's the mess that it would make it would be all red too because it's all it's like a red flower uh it's i love the idea though really really cool idea flower spider um maybe maybe i would uh, just adjust like the position so gesture <laughs> gesture for your for your for your spider um blue screen three times today that's great baton <laughs> uh, everything going under control i see um Yeah, so for your spider, I think I would just arrange the legs a little bit a little bit differently because I yes, you know, you could you could argue that there's foreshortening here in this leg, that's why it's a little shorter because the other part of the the limb is like behind foreshortened. But, you know, if you look at just quickly, you look at this leg. Come on, red. You look at this red, at this sled. <laughs> at this sled, at this red, at this leg. Jesus. <sighs> I'll get it right. If you look and this leg, there we go. And look at this other leg. It's just they're so, so different that it's slightly confusing at first glance. So I would try to maybe do more like this. You know, have it kind of fold, fold up, um, and maybe have them all more in the same same position. So say the body's here, heads. Uh, so the legs, you know, leg in front, middle, in the back. They have eight legs, right? Yeah, legs in the back. So front ones, middle, middle, back, kind of like that. So for one side, little boots. Always better with little boots. Um. And then, you know, and then the flower kind of on top of that. Because it feels like, <laughs> the more I look at it, the more it feels like she's being squashed by her own weight. It's like, Ugh! like those legs just can't support the weight at all. Uh, she's too heavy. That's kind of what it looks like. So having her like suspended in the air, the torso, like the, the, the body not touching the floor, like it seems like, she, like it is here, I think would help. But other than that, that's a really cool design. Super, like, big time creepy. <laughs> yeah, especially all these little stems here. Ooh. Almost looks like eyelashes. Gross, but perfect. Perfect for a spider. What the hell's Maria? Moving on to... Yes, you have more time. Just you can consider that that six month period. Aria. 
and Maria. Let's say, let's say it's a yes, unless there's like way too many people in the stream and like the stream will be like over eight hours and then I'm going to limit it for you guys. Um, but as long as there's some time left, then it's okay. Mm, and today we didn't have too many submissions, so problem. Um, so I hope you're doing well. I am Aurora. You are as well. Uh, I took the feedback you gave me about contrast and tried to apply it to my latest work. So this is actually my first time trying to paint this way. I would like to get your opinion on this. Any critiques or comment on it? Um, anything I should improve on or consider for the next time? Mm. Contrasts. Yes, I think we're, uh, we're still going to have to be talking about contrast in here a little bit. So very high contrast very very high too high experts would agree uh, ex <laughs> experts would argue um they would agree too i'm sure um so contrasts is uh like anything else in art you know it's uh it should be considered as something that's relative to something else in the painting um of course, like the overall contrast is important. Like the overall contrast here is too high, but sometimes it might not be everything needs to change. You know, sometimes it's just, yes, overall, it looks like it's too much contrast, but but only reducing the contrast on some elements might be enough to make it work. So it's usually normal to have in the foreground, like everything that's closer to us, right, right in our face, to have a lot of contrast. So really bright highlights, really dark shadows. Um, but for everything that's further back in the scene, that contrast shrinks, it diminishes. <laughs> Mostly the bottom part, so it gets you, it gets lighter and lighter. So you don't have access to the darkest of blacks, like you would in the foreground. Um, so here I think that's mostly the, mostly the issue. So everything is as dark, like this this black here is as black as that as that black. If anything, not even as black. This is a little lighter than this, and so. I mean, if it was pitch black outside, that effect would not be as as noticeable, uh, and it's not noticeable when the distance is short. Also, you know, this is just this is the equivalent of having air particles in between us and and the subject. So the longer the distance, the more air particles in between, the more that effect will be pronounced. So up close, not super important, not super uh, not super noticeable usually in real life. But as artists, it always looks better when you push that some more. To differentiate, 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 whatever, make the different planes of the painting more different uh, and separate from one another. So the front plane has this level of contrast. The back plane has a less and lesser level of contrast. If that makes any sense. So like everything behind her, I'm just gonna grab these swords, including. I know the swords more in the foreground, but whatever. Uh, So everything back here, that would be kind of like the background. And for that, we would be able to take out the portion of the, the contrast range, the value range, like that. Remove some of it. So now you can't go as dark, right? So this color now is not as dark anymore. Maybe that's, I did it a little too much. Actually, it looks kind of good now. Uh, but the value here is a little bit lighter, lighter than it used to be. Everything that's further back is a little bit lighter. And now the character in the foreground having more contrast, more contrast equals more interest, more, um, yeah, it, it just, it attracts our eyes more, it excites our eyes more. Uh, then it helps us focus on what's important, what's in the foreground. So I would recommend that. And, and overall also, uh, And overall, I think I would just brighten things up just a bit more, just so that we can see. Like maybe not brighten everywhere, but like you know the folds here. Like you want to make sure that you don't 
lose all the information. And here it's very hard to see this the sash that she's got. Is that a sash? And I think the folds here completely disappear. So adding a little bit of light in here. Even if it's just a little bit, just to allow us to see the details in the shadows. Always recommended instead of pure black. Like the pure black, you'll you'll use it, but I recommend that you use it only for the, the deepest of crevices, like the deepest cracks, like uh, in between two deep folds or um, like in between the legs here, it can go, it could go to black maybe, uh, like underneath here or like right underneath the fabric in between the skin and the fabric. Uh, Areas where the light could definitely not escape, but anything else, you know, there would be enough lights usually in the scene for it to bounce around and to lighten up those areas, unless they're really, really dark, really deep, uh, not really dark, but unless they're really, really deep crevices. Um, so even a little bit of light here helps a lot. Just uh, provide more information. Essentially, that's what it does. Allows us to see more of what you have and what you painted. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, don't use blacks too much. Use black. Use black colors sparse, more sparsely. And maybe behind this character to make her pop even more. We could add more of that air in between, in, uh, between her and the background, like faking like a little bit of a fog. Maybe helps her stand out some more. Makes it. Makes it more a dramatic image. Maybe not, but um, but that's something I I like to do. Makes it pop more a little bit. Sometimes. Anyways, well that helps. Santiago, there we go. Save that. Uh, So the um, the uh, <laughs> let's see let's see Fouad's comment here. Don't shade with black. Shading with black is not necessarily a problem. It's uh, shading with black is actually good if you're gonna use like gradient maps to color your drawing because then the blacks could be replaced by a different color. Uh, if anything, shading with black is good in that case. But you just don't want to have pure black as a result once you're done. You know, once once you're like this is my final. If you have a lot of pure black around. That's when uh, that's when it's not so good. So as part of the process, shading with black and then coloring with gradient maps, no problem there. That's great. Uh, you just wanna you don't want to end up with that that black at the end, or at least not too much of it. Like in the foreground, it's okay. Like here, you know, around the flowers, no problem, because that can be pretty dark. That can be pretty deep, and so the light might not be able to escape. But but anywhere else, try to uh, try to lighten it up a bit, just to help. Uh, help us see stuff so we can appreciate the art better. Santiago, so I um, hope everything is going well for you as well. So I made this rough gesture construction sketch of my original character's splash, uh, original character's splash art. I wanted to know general suggestions for f uh, or feedback you'd have at the stage before I start pol polishing more. Um, as always, you're, 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 you're more than welcome ahead of time. I, check this out, man, that was good. Later, Arya. Good night. Um... Ooh, Santiago, that's really good construction. If the character rotates this much, I'm trying to imagine, mm, would the hips be able to, to remain in place the way they are if you swing like this? Did you? Mm. 
Maybe if they haven't worked in it. Mm, nah. Only thing I'm thinking is maybe like this hip here, this side, like the left side of the hip bone, might have moved forward a bit uh, to follow the chest rotation, you know, like the shoulder kind of leading the way and then rotating the spine as a result and then the hips kind of following along with that. So maybe just a little bit of rotation that way um, for that, that hip here. So maybe, uh, maybe instead of the center here being there, maybe it's more here and the hips a little closer to the front. So like we would see this area a little bit more from the side view than from the front, like what you had. Going in like this. I think that might work better. Um, yeah, especially since all of that has to, to connect with the breasts, you know, like that curve here, that's going to be pretty intense if the hips are just facing forward without any kind of rotation. So rotating the hip bones a bit um, is minor, though I don't think it's going to change too much. Uh, the other, the only other part will be like this, this leg here. Um, usually when you have your leg against your, um, against your thigh this way, your, your quad, um, your, um, your calf is going to get pretty, pretty squished. And so look more like, uh, and then you have the leg. big ellipse and then the leg. And this is just a yeah, just just the calf that's being compressed. A small distinction here. Uh, yeah man, dude, the rest is really nice. Is that the no, no, hold on. Is that arm working? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought I thought the thumb was something else. Yes, index pinky. The rest looks good to me. Very nice construction. Yeah. Man. Uh, Joe, uh, how do you decide if I should uh, if you should use graded maps um, to color versus that mid yellow gray difference layer? Uh, mid yellow gray difference layer over oh, that. Um, <laughs> use the stuff I show in the um, in the program, not what I show on YouTube. YouTube is more like fun stuff, uh, like different alternative ways of doing things, and uh, maybe like simpler ways for people that don't have the whole context of art school behind it. Um, what I show in art school is what I feel is the best process to learn, to, to, to get better, you know, to grow as an artist. Uh, I think I compared the, I compared the, the, uh, the program and what I, what I have on YouTube, uh, to like to dishes uh, or to meals, like, uh, everything that's on YouTube, it's more like fast food, <clears throat> like bite size, not super healthy long term, you know. It's there's not the the, the con, there's not as much context behind it, um, and like that alone probably would not be enough, not nearly enough. Uh, and then art school being more like a, a, a nice, really good five course, super healthy, organic meal kind of thing. Um, so that technique that you're that you're referencing, I wouldn't use it at all unless you want to try something different. Um, because it's very dependent on certain tools, very dependent on on the colors that you're gonna use. So it only works in some cases. Um, if you're gonna use a um, a shading technique, use the one from my the tutorial. That's the most the most popular. The because uh, it's gonna be very similar to what I show in the. In the in, um, actually, no, that's not true. Do I show graded map in that case? 
don't. The one is going to be closer, closest to what I would recommend that you do. I think either identical to what I show in the program, or very close to it. Would be where are you? This one here. So this one in here, I show uh, gradient maps, and I show another way to do it without gradient maps. If you don't, you know, if you don't have gradient maps, because to use gradient maps, you kind of need Photoshop. Any other, I know they have it on uh, on Clip Studio Paints, but I doubt it's as good. Maybe it is. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm talking out of my ass right now. Um, but unless they copied it, probably not worth to use it. Unless it's as good. I just don't know. Uh, but I showed the other method too. It works works quite well. Um, it's just that uh, if you don't use graded maps, then yeah, you'll want to be more mindful of um, of your darker colors and how like you'll probably want to tint them uh, after the fact and after you're done with the shading. You can shade with black just to make it easier as a process. But uh, but later down the line, when you're when you're applying applying colors, you'll want to um, go back to your to your to your blacks and maybe like just bump up the light the 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 lightness a little bit the brightness a little bit and and just tint them a little a little bit like just warmer colors or, or cooler colors whatever whatever um colors would work best with the rest of your color harmony Elijah what up as always I hope this week has treated you well yes sir i um, decided to spend this entire week putting the anatomy studies i have done over the last month to the test this is the main thing that i worked on all week and the first time i have ever done such an in-depth study of the full body like this i'm obviously obviously nowhere near close to done yet but i sure gained a ton of experience both in knowledge and anatomy and just shading tell me anything that looks soft or things that i should improve upon Uh, Emilio, I mean, I, I've i done a lot. How many shading tutorials on YouTube now? Uh, one, two, three, four. At least four in, the, in the, like the last year or something. <laughs> uh, I could do another 20 easy. That are, that are pretty different. That give different results. There's just there's so many different ways to tackle it. Um, there are fewer ways to that, that make more sense, you know, when learning things to, to, help, to help you learn faster. Uh, Again, those are what those are the ones that I focus on in the program. But um, yeah, in terms of like the different the different types of looks that you're that you uh, that you want to go for, different styles, different uh, different complexities. I mean, so many so many different types of workflows. It's just sometimes yeah, sometimes it depends on the, the kind of the end result that you want. Other times it depends on the the requirements uh, that you have for certain things. So let's say. You're working in a in a production environment, and uh, you want to be able to be flexible as an artist. So let's say the art director comes over and is like, "Ah, I don't like this color. Can you change the jacket color to to that color instead?" And then you're like, "Oh, oops, I don't have a separate layer for that." Or like, it's all just one layer. Like that would not be a good workflow for that that particular scenario. Instead, you might have you might have wanted to use graded maps in that sense, because then you can just click on your graded map, change the color that color you want. Oh, that one I can change the color to uh, to maybe this this maybe that looks better and then the art director can be behind your back and be like oh yeah, yeah. oh that's perfect now ship it um, if you're not in a production environment then maybe you don't need something that's as flexible there's just different different needs for different uh, different scenarios many ways to go but oh what a beauty Quite a charming man. All right, so he gave that <laughs> nice. He's got a new pair of legs. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, yeah, nice shading here. So the only thing you want to be careful about here is the lighting. The lighting is different on both of these. Shoe. 
uh, you know, like this guy here is kind of lit. It's just there's one main light source coming from the front, and that's about it. Uh, nothing from the nothing from his left side, and then the legs here have a strong light on the left, so something to can something to consider. Like you might not want to add any light here, otherwise it won't work with the torso. Uh, like the calves here, you don't have any light either, based on this lighting setup. Or you can use this light setup here and just add a bunch of lights to this guy's this guy's left side. Uh, just to make it consistent, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm not, I'm not gonna have a whole lot to say here. Uh, just some minor stuff, like uh, like the belly button here being a little a little low. Um, usually, the belly button will will split the abdominal group kind of in half, more or less. So let's say that this continues all the way down here. Probably continues a little lower in reality. Maybe yeah, closer to what I had here. So let's say this is the abdominal group. You know, it would be kind of right down the middle there. Um, so in your case, maybe. Push that up a bit, not a whole lot, but it's just gonna compress these these uh, upper six, you know, abs. Because uh, if you look at his, they're a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like pancakes, you know, rather than being circular, a little a uh, little wider than they're tall. Think a bit more of that by just shifting all of that up ever so slightly. Uh, yeah, on the inside here, you're gonna get an extra little bump. It's hard to tell here, but on the inside of the arm, you have your, your flexor muscles, and then kind of that little bump there. Or some of the um, some of the muscles for the, uh, the, 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 the extensor muscles attached to. What else? What else attaches in here? Part of the um, brachialis and the biceps connective tissue too end up in this in this area. So, like the bicep, you know, goes like that. Dun, 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 dun. And it ends here as a tendon, and then it turns into a flat kind of sheets that covers the inside of the the forearm this way uh, and so because this is strong connective tissue that's kind of wrapping around the forearm it pushes on 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 this entire thing this entire volume so that's why here no pressure there so it bumps out a little bit and then this is gonna change direction slightly and then again. so anyways just keep in mind that there's a little bit of an extra bump here uh, on the inside of the arm. It's not just bicep and then forearm, it's something here. Man, these legs are shredded. Jesus. Must be nice. I wish I could do like this guy, just, uh, just remove my legs and install new ones. Must be nice. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, maybe a little long this way, you know, if you look at the the length here, uh, the length of the uh, the vastus lateralis here on the outside, pretty short in comparison, like yours is really long. Well, Moko's angry, huh? You probably saw some, probably saw some, uh, some crow flying around. <laughs> How dare you? You're not allowed to fly in this area. So maybe shortening some of that. Uh, you might just be able to push down this here. Consider that here you're gonna have your tensor fascia lata. And then start to bump a little lower here. 
and I might just do it. Yeah, and I would also kind of tone down here the transition, because uh, that's just continuous muscle. Like it, because that's just the same thing. You know, it's just the same muscle. So that when it flexes, it flexes a little bit more in this area, because uh, everything else is just kind of underneath. So there is going to be a transition here, but it's less of a less of a hard line, more of a just subtle shift of you know of the surface. Awesome stuff, otherwise. Never a shortcut. Mm. That's not true. There's a bunch of shortcuts. They're just not... <laughs> the, the trick with shortcuts is that they're only shortcuts if you have enough experience to use them. So they're not really shortcuts. <laughs> you can't use it to get, to get faster better. But you can use those shortcuts better with more experience. So you, get, you gain access to shortcuts with experience. Not super useful to know, but um, yeah. All right, Vika, you're up. Chop, chop. Um, I hope your Saturday is going well. Uh, not fainting from hunger by the time you, you get to this. Nope. I'm doing great here. Two questions for you. Um, number one, I did another card yelled. <laughs> the card called Hunted Ship. That makes more sense. The question is, could this card deck project be qualified for the final project of art school? Considering I'm building designs for a ton of items, characters, and environments within the... Uh, hell yeah, that's a really cool, um, really cool project, if anything. Yeah, like a deck of cards, a bunch of different things. So like different like creature cards, maybe, uh, character cards, uh, some spells and potions, and that's a really good idea. Not only could it be considered, but it's genius. Hell yeah. No, no, uh, no, no presentation layout or anything. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, so I also did a rough sketch to block out for the anniversary piece. Decided to combine some of the one and three within the man with a manageable perspective. Any corners at the stage? I really appreciate. I could look at this first. Beer? No. It's these. Oops. Mirrored. Um, that looks great. You can see the, the moonlight through the through the waves. That's that's kind of creepy. There's nobody on board, just sailing away on its own. Du, 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 don't mind me. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of that light shining through the. Uh, if anything, I probably have it more visible here because that's closer to the light source. You know that that red light trans translucency. Maybe not. Maybe just... Nah, that doesn't help at all. Never mind. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, damage itself looks awesome. Uh, as a card... Why doesn't it work as well? Maybe like some of the detail, some of the details are a little too small, and it gets like when the scene has a has a thumbnail size, it gets hard to discern like what's what. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe it's the focal point that's not not as good as it could be. Like you're <clears throat> attracting a lot of um, a lot of attention to to the sail because it's red. Red is just an exciting color. The eyes naturally inclined to look at it. Color blood, <gasps> blood. That's bad news. It's good for us to be able to spot it quickly. And so we do. Ah! But then you also have kind of like the uh, the headlights here that are quite heavy visually. Not much here. Like in this case, I feel like maybe having a, uh, like a, some sort of lantern somewhere on the, on the ship, just so that you can have like hits of light that anchor the eye somewhere, like in here, so that we don't, we don't have to worry about all the details. Like the details will be more like a peripheral thing. So instead, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not going to work. Let's try it. Let's say you had like a, a lantern, maybe like on the side here, letting up the mast. But just this one mast, the back one here, it's too far back. Maybe that doesn't get any lights. Maybe like the top of the sides here, get a little bit of light as a result too. here maybe this here because it's right next to the right next to it maybe that rope a little bit of extra lights let's actually draw this lantern while you add lantern doesn't need to be this exactly but but some ex some more anchor like it needs almost like a, yeah it's one one more point somewhere in here just to anchor the eyes because right now like i travel i go from here to here to here to here and i, I try to avoid this because it's too busy as a thumbnail like, big size like this I, i'm able to, to see everything to appreciate everything but yeah so if you made this uh, this place here in the middle of the boat a little bit more cozy just so that uh, our eyes can wander in there and be like oh Nice! And not be overwhelmed by the amount of uh, stuff. All the lines. Might help. I mean, it could be, could be many other things. Maybe not yellow, maybe like a, a blue light to make it more creepy, or purple light. I don't know. But anyways, uh, this image, nice, very nice. When it's super tiny, all these lines get a little, a little too blurry. Do something. Um, Extend it a little higher, just to make it more, make it more grandiose, grandiose. Because mm. those buildings are like, they're like teasing me. 
hey, we're going this way, but you can't come. I feel like, um, yeah, more of a portrait shot for this one might work better. So we can see more of the sky and also uh, it will give us like more of a like a rest area, you know, something uh, and like she would be at like the one third maybe. Uh, vertically speaking. So let's see, it goes all the way up here. Those big buildings in here. See our entire umbrella. And then some cool clouds in the back. I feel like this is more airy, like we can take in more of the more of the scene. <sighs> and I don't think it would be that much work anyways, you know, it's just the stop up here. Moko, you're too loud. <sighs> That's all I got, because otherwise, the composition works really well. It's nicely laid out. Feels. Yeah, I think it needs the height. Ghost crew. Oh, a ghost, ghost crew might might do the trick, yeah. Like some, some, some white skellies walking in there. Anything to anchor the eyes, really. That, that, that's a really good idea, actually. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then by extending the top, maybe extending the bottom here just a little bit. Just a little bit more, because now it feels like she's cropped maybe a little too soon. Yeah, that's uh, that looks promising. Mm. Uh, about the character herself, uh, 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 this this would need a little bit of work. So I think you could like lower her, oh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not lower the waist, but uh, keep the waist where it is and have it continue down a little bit more to the into the stomach, and then the <clears throat> and then the legs. So extending her, just making her taller, I should taller this way, by pushing down. And the knees, the knees pretty long too for, her, for the height of her torso. So shorter thighs, a shorter upper leg, uh, longer torso, like maybe even more than that. Maybe it's just a matter of lifting this whole thing. Yeah, just make sure she can have like a, a robotic rib cage and robotic guts in there. And enough space for for the rib cage and the hips to to kind of exist and not be not be like touching or not being too close. Oh, the hell's become. But the colors, the uh, the overall idea, the, the how everything is laid out in there. Ooh. That's gonna be good. 
It better be. Alonso, what's up? I finished this piece for turn five, but I'm not. Uh, but I'm sure there are a lot of improvements. Improvements I could have done in the lighting. I just started the color and light theory too, and learned a lot more for this piece. I would like to tell me uh, advice about lighting on the water and composition, as well as your own opinion of the character. All right, well, uh, that was cool. Really, uh, really simple, uh, the shading in here, but that looks like, you know, that looks like a tube that's shiny. Uh, nice, looks nice. I love the little glare too. Um, I think my main feedback here will be about just the, the structure, like having a more, um, more obvious structure to the anatomy, because right now it feels more like a, more like a micro microscopic, you know, creature, like something that's super small that doesn't that doesn't have a skeleton, that doesn't really have more like a cell, you know, it kind of just like like a blob of stuff. Just because the arms here, it's like where where are these uh, are these arms or are these more like mm, like mustaches mustaches. <laughs> Mustache, um, more like uh, like can these be can these be articulated? Can he control that or not? Can he control these because they look the same? You would think that if he can control the back one, if he can control the back one, he can probably control the front ones too. But how the hell do you have muscles like coming out or limbs coming out of your face? Uh, 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 uh. So the only thing I would recommend here is just looking at. It doesn't need to be exact super accurate in, uh, animal anatomy, but uh, even like just a fish skeleton. Like even respecting some semblance of, of a structure would help. Like maybe, maybe it's more like a fish, you know, like a fish like this. Where here the the hard part, like the stuff that's that everything else is gonna be attached onto, where the, all the muscles gonna be attached on, you know, you, you need a skeleton essentially. So it feels like this guy doesn't have any skeleton. It feels more like he's all all jelly. Like, woo! So maybe it's something in uh, in the in the face. Maybe you can, we can see like the structure of the bones through the face, just like you can with a fish. You know, like fish, they're pretty lean. Usually you can see a lot of the. Especially like the big fish. Let me see. Let me find one. Mm. Big fish. There you go. So yeah, like in the face here, you have like part of the bone. You have the eyes. You can tell like the, the eye socket around the eyeball. Uh, the mouth itself has a, a distinct shape. You can see the, the structure here of the side like for the, the gills. And so I think it's just that, that kind of structure that's missing. So, you know, around the eyes could be, I mean, that's, that's all hard stuff around the eyeball. So maybe that influences the, the shading a little bit, you know, it kind of pokes out, pushes against the skin, pushes against the muscles, deforms the face as a result. The bottom here, you gotta have the like the bottom of the uh, the eye socket, maybe catching a little bit of light. Uh, maybe up here that gets a little deeper as it goes towards the eyeball, and then and then what happens here? So where is that sticking out from? Can't really stick out from the front if the mouth is there, but uh, maybe. It was a little bit lower, you know, like under the head, that might make more sense. So then it doesn't have to come out of like the jaw or something. So maybe a little lower here. 
just to give enough enough space for the just the eye socket to come complete to wrap up, and then maybe down there like under the bed under the under the the body, these things kind of stick out kind of like legs. From under rather than from the side. And then you could make the argument that yeah 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 there's like a, a little bit of a joint here. Like maybe some sort of bone here that's connected to the spine, and then you have like the skull of this this weird fish maybe going like that. And underneath here that's kind of connected below to the to the spine of the fish. The, it's not a fish obviously, but the spine of this swimming swimmer snake frog and then here you know that's the spine and so what's attached to the spine is there is there a tail here no how are those legs attached are they attached to to the sides and then here maybe the tail continues a little bit longer and ends maybe there's no tail uh, but still the legs here are gonna kind of pick up on the side so it's just a little bit more of that structure like I think most creatures can work. You just you just have to make a little bit more sense of it to make them more believable. Because I think that's the, the main the main weakness here is just that this guy is just it doesn't look like there's any structure. There is, but it looks it looks too too squishy, almost non-existent. Um, the shading is really nice though overall. Nice colors, uh, well presented against a dark background. A little bit of glare kind of helps. Just to make it look cool. Um, so you're asking about um, lighting underwater. Yeah, lighting underwater is just like regular water. It's just that lighting underwater makes makes um, gets rid of all the specular highlights. So that stuff in the in the eyes like that would not be possible underwater. Uh, because that, that only shows up when something is wet. And if you're in the water, then there's no surface, you're in it, right? So uh, if you got out of the water, then yes, that eyeball would get quite shiny and probably the like the top of his body here, all, all shiny and slimy. All of this here would be, would be wet now, so that would, that would all catch the light. All of this here would catch the light too, that'd be all wet. Uh, but underwater, you're not gonna get any of that. So I don't know what I usually do uh, when painting underwater creatures. I just I ignore that they're underwater. It's almost like it's an underwater creature, but taken out outside of the water just so that you can add those 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 more interesting you know material properties um, that you would not see otherwise if it were in the water. Uh, how would you convey the large scale if it were something like an octopus? Um, scale is. Is all about uh, the scale is relative, so it's all about like the surrounding areas. Um, so let's say you have like a tiny face with a, like small eyes, small face, so small face with like really really long tentacles. That contrast between the two is gonna gonna help sell the fact that it's maybe like a big, a big animal. Um, Or it could be just the size of the suckers on the on the tentacles. You know, like imagine you have you have something like this. Let's get get that shine off, bro. Let's say you have something like this, and then you have uh, little suckers underneath. Maybe they're this big. Then it'd be like, oh, that reminds me of like a normal octopus. You know, that's about the ratio that you're used to seeing for for normal octopuses. relative to the the size of the limb you know all right that's that's about it so you could you could imagine maybe that's like a, a, a regular octopus or but well, what happens if those details instead are like huge not like what you're used to seeing so maybe the, the suckers are like this big and like they take up most of the space then looking at this you'd be like hmm well, maybe that's a baby octopus. So it's just it's how those things work in relationship to one another. 
And the um, last thing I'll say here, like those things, uh, those glowy bits on the back. Um, patterns are fine, but I would try to make them not as patterny. So you can have that kind of repetition. It's unusual in nature, but you know, you can have it, whatever. It's, it's your art, you choose whatever you want to do. Uh, but I would maybe change the size of it. So maybe like the big one here, or maybe the front one here is a little, a little smaller, a little bit more narrow. Maybe it doesn't go as low. Or maybe it does, but it's, it's just smaller. And then the, uh, this one here maybe is the longest, the fattest. And then the back one here is almost almost gone. Same idea as um, as when you look at this, right? You have a pattern here, the spine, pattern, pattern, like all these, not the spine, but the the ribs, not ribs, but uh, the, 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 damn it. What's the word? Fish, <laughs> whatever. These bones, these bones, what? These bones here, there is a pattern. They're equally placed, like uh, there's, uh, uh, they're placed at equal distance from one another, but, but they're not the same length. So they start bigger and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that breaks the pattern in a sense. Same thing with the uh, the dorsal ones here. Like those are thicker, bigger than the ones found here at the tail. So try to break a pattern. Try to break your patterns that way. So if you have something to repeat, and change the size of it, the scale of it. So that it's not a pattern all the way. Just a little bit. Maybe the front here is tiny. Maybe it's not developed as much. Anyways, hope that helps. Moving on to the view. Oh wait, is it who? <laughs> is that with you or Hannah? Um, <laughs> whoa, starting to that's deep. Now it's their own character that they created. That's 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 alive t talking for them. You're welcome, Alonso. My pleasure. Um, so Liv, uh, Liv's been finishing up some coding work for weeks now and isn't able to draw as much, but I've got a question if that's okay. When and how should Liv and Hannah... <laughs> feels so strange to talk like that. Um, and Hannah approach monetizing and distributing the work. Ooh. Is it better to try for crowdfunding early and grow it slowly with the project or to wait until volume is done and use Kickstarter first? Should it just be all free as long as possible to build a following? Would you recommend a dedicated web a dedicated website or joining a hub like Tapas? Um, so business recommendation. Uh, let's see, let's see. So, like uh, you know, like crowdfunding, in any way, like on, on even on Kickstarter, or if you do it, if you do it, uh, just like grassroots on on your own terms. Uh, outside of Kickstarter, uh, you need you need the the audience for it, right? So, if you guys can, what I would recommend, I think what would make the most sense, unless you already had both of you like a huge following that's that's ready to you know to just jump and jump on whatever you guys are creating. Um, usually, that's not the case. I don't think that's the case, and so I would probably recommend that you. That you guys be really, really good about sharing stuff about the project on social media. Um, maybe creating a page, although that might conflict with your your own artistic goals, <laughs> putting the putting the project like on a pedestal. But you're asking about you know, about about selling this idea. That's what I would do. I would open up a uh, a page for the comic, you know, so uh, whatever the, the comic name, uh, the comic, whatever you want to call it, really doesn't matter, but something that represents, you know, the your you guys' comic, 
and uh, open like an Instagram just for that. So that when people want to see stuff about this project, they know where to go. Boom, they can subscribe and see all the all the updates as you guys are working on it. Um, and there'll be both of you contributing to the same account. And so that's gonna that's gonna make it. Of course, you can you can um, also share the same thing on your own account. Uh, but yeah, that's where you get diluted a little bit doing that because you're you're splitting the viewers maybe, or maybe not, or maybe it's a way to to kind of pull all of your audience, all of your followers together and, and grow faster as as a result. Anyways, doesn't really matter. That's not the point. But for the project, I think I would have its own Instagram, its own Twitter, maybe where you post for for the following year updates on on how things are going, different uh, different work in progresses, different different characters, uh, and then wait until that page grows to a, a decent size that you can then advertise to when it comes the time to to launching this thing to actually selling it. So yeah, so number one here. I think that would be uh, the way to go. If I had a project like this, that's what I would do at least. Um, and so this way, you know, you, you're kind of slowly building hype as things go. Like uh, people can see stuff uh, coming together, just like I have, just like everybody here uh, has. You're watching you guys develop this stuff. It's super fun. It's really, really fun to watch this all come together. Uh, and I think that that's that's part of the product. That's that's part of the. Uh, of, of what is gonna make this successful, you know, like seeing it all come together and all the work that went into it. And then people I feel are way more likely to invest and to, to spend money to, to get it, seeing how, how much work it took to get there. So that's what I would do. So I don't know how long you guys think of, uh, of working on that first book and that first, um, first book <laughs> trying to look for a different name but that's it um, maybe not a year maybe a year is too much but uh but yeah it's just the tricky part is to make sure that you have that you grow enough of an audience so um, because that's that's who you're you'll be pitching to so if that audience is, if that audience is too small like if it hasn't been enough time from the time that you that you started the account for the for, for the book until you actually deliver might be disappointing so it's all about the audience so whatever can make that grow the fastest the uh, you know i would show as much as you can to help to help with that because even if people see all the all the all the different pages work in progress all the different characters all that stuff like they're not going to have the full story to be able to digest in like in one go and so there's always going to be I don't think you'll lose money and it's not like people will be like oh, i've seen everything already no point in buying it mm, i don't think so um, if anything they'll just be more excited to to purchase it to finally have the final product anyways that's just uh, what i would recommend but yeah if you have but also doing that i don't know what uh, what the pass is to be honest i have uh, no idea i'll i'll check it out but i would do that on top of having your own like Instagram page for the the project, and having you know maybe a, a link to the Instagram from there. So any any link that you can create, that's good. So joining hubs helps you collect maybe um, potential yeah potential followers, and then you bring them back to your page so that they can they can see the content streaming in as you guys post more conveniently right from their Instagram app. But my approach you know, to paid content is, uh, I mean, you guys know, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's mostly free. You know, it's a lot of really good free stuff. So much to the, so much that uh, you know somebody that's very resourceful could uh, yeah could could be satisfied with just that, but then you always you you put a little bit uh, not a little bit you put a lot more effort into something else something that that's more advanced something that's just more crafted uh, more elaborate for those that 
that might want that that extra thing. So it's just going to be a small percentage of, of everybody that's sticking in the free stuff. But um, but if that's a lot of people, that can that can mean like you know significant amount. So my approach is always just give a lot of stuff for free, but have the option for people to buy something if they want. But advertise the free stuff and then just have like the the paid stuff on the side there available if they want it. But that's not the main thing. That's not the that's not what you're advertising. So I, in term in, in terms of a book, you know that could be uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys release like small chapters, um, one at a time, like just a few pages, a few pages, a few pages, a few pages, and you can get you can get it this way for free, and then maybe like the paid version is just the whole thing combined. Maybe like a, a, just a nicer nicer look to it, uh, maybe with some pages in color, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Anyways, Peyton. What up? So I didn't get as much done as I would have liked to this, uh, as I would have liked to this week. But I did get page three done and page four started. I want to know if the layouts changes work and if everything looks like it fits together. But also, <clears throat> you guys know that I have your back, so. Um, so that's going to be, that's going to be some, some traffic extra, um, to get things started. But, um, yeah, so as soon as you have something to share, you can be damn sure that I'll share with, uh, with everybody. You're my dear students. I want you to succeed as much as possible. Um. That goes for all of you too. So, not just Libby and Hannah. Oh yeah, that's cool, man. Um, hold on, let me try something. Would white, like a white line, work better here? Maybe go for white, just so that we can clearly see that those are different different boxes. Because otherwise, you know, like that one here, like the background here, and this might seem like it's merging together a little bit. Um, so white outlines, you know, they they, all, they can always look quite nice. You would use a black outline for something like if the background's too too light, but you can you can swap that as much as you want. Oh, but yeah, man, I like this a lot better. That uh, feels a lot more immersive. It feels like the, the layout is is not like in the way, you know, it's not like, oh, I wish I could see more of the image. And now it's like, you see as much of the image as possible. That's nice. Say it though. There you go, Vika. Hell yeah. It's cool. Hell yeah. Summer vacation time. Oh yeah, I had my, my second vaccine too. Man, that was not fun. <laughs> Took me out for a day. <clears throat> at least now I can I can venture into the world. Soon at least. Two weeks from now. Um... So I was gonna say, uh I 
think this page here, at least the top of it here, a little confusing. Mm. Why is that? Ah, I see. So, mm, maybe it's just a matter of, like he's dreaming, right? Is that it? He's in his sleeping on his on his couch, and this thing here comes down, and then stabs him through the house, through the roof, poosh, right into him. So yeah, that's what I'm getting. So it's kind of like a dream kind of thing. So it's like a he's getting stabbed in this in this dream. It's not real. Um, how could you? Maybe, 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 maybe having like a, because that's the only thing that's not clear. Like it seems like he suddenly like teleported somewhere else. Maybe you can still see the room back here, and it's kind of like this, uh, this like hazy, uh, like hazy, glowy thing around him. Like kind of, I'm trying to find like where else have I seen this. Anything to to remind people that, or maybe it could be it could be the bed also, not the bed, but the uh, the couch here. He could still be on it, <laughs> you know, kind of like the couch is still there, and he's clearly still in his house. You can see the couch, but like everywhere, everywhere, everything else is just kind of weird. Whoa, what the hell? And so when he goes back here. To his pillow, you're like, oh yeah, no, he's still, he's still there. It's just things crazy. Or maybe, maybe it could be as simple as just like a little box that says, "In dr in the dream world," or or maybe the background is the same. It's just maybe it's just a little bit of like magical stuff around it. You know, like a, like magical sparkles, like maybe these things here. Like it's it's just the same room. But but there's extra stuff around, not enough to to light up the whole room, but like stuff around him. Yeah, it's just a connection between where he is, where he's at here, and then where he is now. Not as clear, I think, as it could be. And 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 then the other two boxes here, like this one here, I don't. Mm, know what that is and then i get that she's like the art is awesome so don't get me wrong it's just like the the, the progression so like from here to here like what is she looking at is she looking at the at the the sky because if she is it feels like you would need to see first what she's looking at so maybe that box is that i don't know like maybe like she would look at the sky and like the sky's all messed up and that's why she's looking up and that introduces her as a character like she was walking by and then she i don't know she gets involved somehow but not knowing where she's looking at is very annoying um and the fact that she's looking up almost suggests that he's now floating in the air like above his house that's why she needs to look up that's what i thought initially but but clearly not, you know, he's still on uh, still on this on his uh, on his couch. So yeah, like the way that you introduce um the action here, I think could be clearer. Smaller. Oh, is that this guy? Oh, Are these like different boxes? Is that it? This and this and then this and then. Yeah, I think it's just maybe this box here that's confusing. Like if it was. What could it be? What could it be? Yeah, it could be whatever she's looking at. But like, uh, it's 
something that that looks more similar to what we've seen before. Just with comics, you know, you gotta be careful to not introduce new things too quickly. Um, otherwise, people will just like, wait, what is that new? Like to you, it might make sense because you're you have all your characters, like you know everything that's happening. But as you're introducing this to people that have no idea, you ha you have to kind of like take their hands a lot at the beginning, just introduce new things, but like very slowly and kind of guide them through it. So. Yeah, I think there's just too much information in here, I think. If it was just a simple... Um, yeah, she's looking at this, you know, like the the weird clouds. And that's just, it's just something else, you know, that's... Okay, he's going through that, and then she's looking at the... What happened, like, whoa, that's weird. I think that would be, that would be a lot more clear. And then we can move on to the rest. Back to him, like, what's happening, oh. So yeah, in terms of the uh, the layout, I think that's pretty much all. Because like the first page is awesome, very clear. This one, very clear too. This one, not as much like this part here. But uh, art-wise, though, man, that's, that's nice quality for for a comic. Yeah, that's really good. And this seems a lot more obvious again, you know, like you have clear indication of what's happening. Okay, clearly progressing in time. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue here. Nice stuff, baby. Well, that helps. Moving on to Tomas. Um, so in the past two weeks, I have been drawing more faces, construction, constructing them. After looking at some angles in the reference picture, drawing the rest of my imagination and tweaking them after with the reference. Okay. These are the last two I shaded one of them today. It was hard, but I expect worse results. Any advice would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, and yeah, like, it's just side note, but like to, to practice drawing hair, um, practice with ribbons. I think it's really the best way to, to, to be able to like construct or just, just to understand like what you see here a lot better. Because everything can be turned into a ribbon. Like all of these here, that's the ribbon. Small ribbon here. Another ribbon there around the ear. I said. Another ribbon here and it kind of twists there. Uh, in the back here, another ribbon. Another one here that goes over the, the front one. So anyways, uh, just thinking about something like this, like a long rectangle, but that's 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 uh, it's flexible. It can twist, bend, flow in the wind. So if you twist it, you know, if you take this this tip here, this corner, and you twist it that way, doink, uh, it look like that. Going, smoke was going crazy. So, you know, like you just went like this, boop. and so it's being able to draw this, but in different angles with 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 curves included. So perspective, maybe your little little band will look like that, and then if you twist it. Like this, and going crazier with the twists. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. There we go. Um, twist some more, maybe. Move the section. Um, so if you're able to do this, 
like pretty easily in a bunch of different angles. You should be, uh, you should have a lot of fun with hair because that's just, yeah, that's just one lock of hair. And then you just duplicate that a bunch of times, change up the, uh, the look a bit, and then you end up with a full haircut. But that's not at all what you're talking about what you're asking about. Um construction it is. Really well constructed. And um, what's helped me is uh, to, to draw faces in general is to always think of the like the eye socket when you, when you draw when you draw the face. So like having like a skull nearby is helpful. But just, uh, just take this guy's head here. Uh, but like drawing the shape here and the shape of the eye socket. Come on, focus. There we go. In a bunch of different angles, it's kind of like this big rounded square. Um, but learning what that looks like in relation to like the position of the mouth and the nose. And so you can always kind of sketch that first that indicates it looks just like av aviator, uh, <laughs> without sunglasses almost, but it indicates where the, uh, where the eyebrows are going to be. Cause that's where like the top ridge here, that's, you know, the eyebrows kind of just lands right on the, on the ridge of the eye socket for the most part. Uh, it tells you what happens here on the in the corner, um, like on the profile shot. That's that's the eye socket here, poking out. That's why this sticks out. And then it kind of goes into, and then you have the cheekbone here that sticks out. But the eye socket is kind of kind of like this. So seen from the side, you know. Once again, it's almost like angled downwards. He's looking down. There's a slight angle here. Going up. Uh, anyways, and then it helps you position the eyeball because the eyeball is usually going to be towards the top and center of that. And then down here in the empty hole, the empty gout, that's where you're going to get your, your lower eyelid and your, your fat pads here, like this little thing here. The stuff that gets like super poofy when you get old old and wrinkly and then also that's you see that line on because <laughs> I, I look tired that's the line here that follows again that's that eye socket like you can touch the bone right here so for like male characters for example that you want to look that you want to make look more manly than that line here that's going to be one line in their face like defining feature and the nose um, so anyways Knowing the position of those uh, those uh, those sockets quite useful, so I would uh, maybe include that. Just a small suggestion. Otherwise, you did great. This one here may be a little too wide, you know. Uh, when you shave off some of these, uh, like when you slice off part of the of the sphere, slice it off. The head is meant to be uh, narrower as a result of that. So the jaw here could uh, should be able to continue into that shape. A little, uh, a little narrower here in general. Oh, that one looks great though. Really nice. And she's got a very interesting face. Super long jaw. Um, this looks good. This looks really good. So constructions, yeah, nothing to say here. Uh, great job. Just that's it. Keep it up. More and more. Uh, I would also. Yeah, keep practicing though. Um, keep practicing like simpler, 
simpler constructions where you don't draw like the, the facial features but like you know stuff again in in angles that are going to be more useful to you like nothing too extreme but like if you're looking to the side maybe to the top here uh looking down below looking to the side maybe more profile shots uh, and then in between that then you can you can work on these more committed drawings committed studies But it's really like this stuff here that will make this easier. As strange as that might seem. As strange as that might sound. But shading's pretty good here. Can definitely feel the can definitely feel the volume. Uh, yeah, it's just like maybe I would have gone a little darker in some areas here. Uh, so right underneath the lip and in between the the chin and the side of the mouth here it goes a little darker you can, you can push that some more uh, 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 right next to the nose here you know like a this is kind of like a mountain and then when you look at it from the side here you see kind of like the top of the mountain and then you're missing the back of it but more like the back of it here it's gonna be this, this darker bit slightly darker right next to the nostril right behind the nose slightly darker line here underneath the eye lid uh, as the cheek as the chin <laughs> the chin as the the cheek goes on the opposite side of her face uh, and then also darker up here a little bit under the nose and it's the shadow under the nose that makes the nose feel like it's it's coming out otherwise it looks flat if you don't if you don't have that too much or if you don't have that enough visible enough uh, um, um, um. yeah very nice shading actually I feel like her like this part here maybe a little, a little too thick like she definitely feels more like a like whoa, whoa. definitely feels more like a V her face you know Just, come on brush like this a bit more here so I like I would shave off some of that stuff here yeah small stuff nice nice um kevin Let's do for another break. Uh, let's do let's do let's do two or three more. Um, what's up, Kevin? So this week I took a hit in creativity and skill since it feels I took another step back. Nothing came out right, and uh, it's looking like I'll need to resort back to tracing more models references. <gasps> no, don't do it. Had a very difficult time trying to get the basic shapes of the pelvis. Uh, for the model sitting down on the far right uh well this is a really hard pose maybe use a pose that's not as hard you know it's a uh, it's like you're um it's like you're, you're you're starting to learn uh to to run the the 100 100 meter 100 meter sprint and you're aiming for 10 seconds you know so you're running as fast as you can you clock it it's like 15 seconds this is not for me. I better give up now. Like the bar is set too high. Like this is even for experienced artists a hard pose to pull off. So this is really hard pose to pull off too. Stay away from those. You know you can you can do them to just to test yourself to see how much you know how uncomfortable you can get. But 
Um, honestly, like I would stick to these kinds of poses, sitting poses, poses where the, the limbs are too foreshortened. Keep that for later. That's that's advanced stuff. Um, yeah, pra like practice standing po the poses that you'll use most of the time when you're when you're when you're drawing. So characters standing up, just idle poses, you know, like different different like hip positions, shoulder positions, like balancing the shoulders and the hips. Uh, is the character relaxed? Is the character more more like uh, more alert? Is the character like meant to be imposing or like more like hunched over like a, like a scrawny little little character or or tall and mighty? Like focus on that stuff. It's already pretty hard as it is. Uh, and I'll probably serve you better anyways. Um... So that's but that's my recommendation, you know. Uh, use references that are way simpler than that. Those are extremely. Those are as high as hard as they'll get. Uh, there's really not not much that could get harder than this, especially you have like some uh, some some lens distortion in here. That's top level. Ten out of ten difficulty. That too. So go for something that's more like level one, two, three. That's what I did. My entire art career before I actually before I got hired at Blizzard. It was just simple simple poses. I would go for poses that are one out of ten. Two out of ten. <laughs> That's it. Maybe three when I feel when I feel uh when I feel cocky. But uh <laughs> but other than that just just get good at the stuff and these simpler poses can still create some amazing characters and you'll you'll just get to spend time on working on other stuff, like working more on design or working on, on polishing your anatomy. Because uh, again, anatomy, working on this is, it's compounded the difficulty because you're working off of a pose that's already pretty hard to just wrap your head around. And then on top of that, you're you're supposed to imagine how the muscles work and like deform at different angles. When the leg is bent, in this case, like some muscles are flexed, some are not, this is extremely hard stuff. So. Use better, use simpler references. That's I'm not gonna zoom on that. We're gonna get banned from Facebook, but psh, psh. but poses like this, and even that has a little bit of a, a little bit of foreshortening, a little bit of perspective to it. That's that's that would be more like a like a level three, you know, level four maybe. Um, difficulty. So go for the simpler, simpler poses. Because, um, because yeah, when you when you over challenge yourself, like when you when you overwhelm yourself, it's um, is super demoralizing. Because you you feel like you're you know like you're you you might be full of confidence. You know, um, after after working on something that's a little bit simpler, maybe. And then you're like, all right, let's move on to this, and then you completely get, you know, destroyed by, by, by the challenge. That doesn't feel good, and it's it almost it burns you a little bit. Like you don't, you're less likely to to want to do it again, and so focus on the fun. Uh, I don't know how many times I need, I I I need to repeat this, but the fun part is the most important. Um, focus on that. Simpler poses less of a challenge so that you can ace the challenge instead of barely getting by and maybe getting like a D minus. Feels way better to have to tackle a, an easier challenge and get a A pluses, A minus, but like staying in the A's all the time. Hell yeah. I want to do more of that. I want to keep winning. Um just from the back. A little a little something. Um uh, so scapulas of the scapula right here so the um, the, the the posterior head of the delt is a little like it occupies a big area in the back here and it's usually going to yeah 
So just just slightly more than what you have. Yeah. Like it starts to curve down a little sooner. Not a big change, and that's the only the only real issue that I can spot here. Back muscle. Uh, like maybe these, like the the lats here, uh, have it wrapped around a little lower, so that you have more, um, so that the uh, the um, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major have enough enough room to exist. Because yeah, like seen from the back, the uh, the 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 the, the lats. Let me get your trapezius here. Shoulders and a lats and then rotator cuff group and so it kind of it, it attaches here and so it wraps around here at the base of the, the trapezius and it kind of continues straight out and then wraps up so like they like this part here like this, this blocky shape pushes like it it, it forces the uh the latissimus to kind of go around it and so it's, gonna, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be like straight up like you had it it'll have to kind of wrap around and and then back up but that's all awesome stuff otherwise easy nailed it oh institute of human anatomy oh that sounds familiar i think that's it do they have a youtube man then i can for sure get rid of tiktok Oh, yes, that's it. Institute of Human Anatomy. Boom, there you go. <laughs> Look at this. Uh. My wife thinks it's super creepy, understandably. But uh, let's see, like, it'll open stuff up, like, show the joints. So the, it's awesome. If you're into anatomy, of course. If you're not, then it's just the creepiest thing ever. But um, highly recommend. I'm not subscribed. Let's subscribe to this. Click. Thanks. Uh, thanks for finding finding that out, Bruno. Yeah, it's kind of like that, Joe. It's kind of like that. Uh, Gunter. What? What's his face? The guy that uh, that has like expositions everywhere. Like he does that. He, he plasticizes the, the plasticizes the muscle and then and then positions them in different you know different uh, different poses. And uh, I've never been though. I, I really need to go go check that out one day. But it's kind of like that, except the guy is just. He's playing with it, <laughs> showing the layers. Like here's what's under that, and here's how this is attached to here. Here's the how that twists when the muscle flexes or whatever. Very interesting. Um, Curtis. So yeah, the, the, the team team slightly uh team slowly starting to uh to come together. What are they up to this time? I've been working on a group illustration for the characters I created, and this is what I've got so far. Chose to put a big nuke in the background because I think it's a rather fitting for uh, it's rather fitting for characters based on the horsemen of the apocalypse. I like how it turned out, but I worry that it might be too distracting. I've already taken out a lot of the saturation and the blur effect. I don't know if it's enough. Maybe adding lights and shadow to the characters will help. Spent a long time trying to create a good composition with this, but I don't really know if any of it is working. Oh man, that's good. Look at that. Look at that. What is this? Uh, that's the squatting, squatting pose. Spot on. Those the subtlety of the knees here. Mm -mm. Ah, beautiful. This is good stuff. Yeah. So composition wise, uh, I feel like I almost feel like she's um. Like she's introducing the ex the explosion. Like, look at what we did. That's us. But but she's not like I'm like missing that finger here. But maybe she should, you know, because the only reason I'm saying this, the, the explosion is right down the middle where you would maybe have like a, a character normally if that wasn't the case. Like uh, it almost feels like a character is missing here, so. That's fine, you know, if the explosion is meant to be important, but then I would I would definitely make it important. Like uh, maybe that that other arm that she has, maybe she's like uh, ta da! This is what we did. Oh, 
Or, 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 or if the character is more important, which is probably a character should be more important because the character is awesome. I would just just bring them closer together and. Uh, And uh, let the the explosion take more of a secondary role. So yeah, maybe more like this, so that the explosion is more like this uh, secondary thing in the background, and maybe not a nuke, so that it's not like so symmetrical. Maybe more just like an explosion. Kind of like mimicking their shape, kind of like this this ball shape, you know, like a a circle of friends. <laughs> uh, the worst selection job ever. But let's see, that's not quite right. Maybe too intense. Maybe like a darker explosion. Oh, maybe something like this, like more abstract. Something, something dark, you know, because your character is quite bright. So you want something that's uh, that's not gonna steal the show. Like, uh, yeah, like this maybe would be cool. Something with a lot of black smoke. Um, but I would definitely, yeah, go for something that's a bit more, almost like to frame them, you know, like uh, there they are, and then uh, helping helping them. Uh, helping frame them is the explosion in the back, kind of containing them, essentially. I think that would make for a better, better composition. Otherwise, I would have them all like around, like uh, not blocking the view at all, and more like presenting the uh, the explosion, like this is what we did. <laughs> we nuked the place. Problem. Um. So yeah, but that's uh composition wise. Uh. When it comes to the characters themselves, I've already said what I think of them. They're all sick. They all look awesome. Uh, good poses here. Cool interactions between them. Yeah, I would just uh, reduce the gap in between. But uh, that's that's pretty much it, Curtis. I mean, this looks awesome. This looks awesome, but the background background could be more fitting for them I think moving on to Joe Peter slice Joe um, this term 5 assignment is now uh, it's not done yet I still plan to add more details skin texture and spines spines Mold. <laughs> uh, but could you give me uh, but you could if but could you give some feedback on your on the current state? Man, I can't. I can't put I can't put one word after the other. I also still seem to have trouble with the size of the image and the lines. The outline is too thick, so it makes it harder to add finer details since it feels like the lines will overpower them. Yep, yep. And here, yes, you're right. Um I know this is annoying at first, like I always hated to hear that when I was uh, <laughs> when I was less experienced, but I mean, even when I was working on Blazor, I didn't want to hear anything like that, but, uh, but you know, I would just clean that up, you know, you could, uh, you could just go like this, reduce the opacity a bit, just it would help if the background was not the same thing. Reduce the opacity and then uh, and then clean this up. Now that you now that you have the structure already, all you gotta focus on really is your clean lines. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. Why I want to draw? Damn it! There we go. Wrong. New layer. Listen. And now we can just go at it real clean. Just focus on the focus on the actual line. Details already there. No need to worry about that. Just need to focus on clean lines. Putting weight where you want it. That makes sense. No weight where it doesn't. 
And uh, this way you get some super clean line arts. And you'll see like this process actually, I mean, obviously is a lot quicker than, than drawing the original from scratch. Uh, you, you're essentially tracing over your own art, so it goes a lot faster. And uh, yeah, and the more experience you get, the faster the process is. So like for a full character, it might take like less than 10 minutes, whereas the character might have taken like an hour and a half to draw. So I think it's worthwhile time investment for just how much cleaner it can get. And then this allows you to color, to color it better. Um, easier to, to make selections, to make color selections for your flat colors and all that stuff. So highly recommend. Uh, Yeah, that's really good, man. That was really good. The only thing I'll say uh, would be a little bit of of of, of foreshortening here, maybe not foreshortening, but a little bit, a little bit of uh, of overlapping, overlaying, overlaying, lapping. Um, because the spine here doesn't change, right? It keeps going, it keeps going, and the leg is just gonna be behind that. So if the light's coming from the side too. thinking about what what these are right so you have a big cylinder for the tail and the body center of it go and you have a leg that's attached here it's essentially a cylinder that not cylinder but a, yeah a cylinder that attaches here that attaches on the other side it comes towards us a bit tapers down gets smaller On the other side mirror dots so exactly the same thing but going in the opposite direction more or less not uh, not quite symmetrical but um, kind of and then and then what else what happens then you have the knee that goes opposite direction from that but so you can do the same thing here this line here to continue maybe like the middle Cylinder somewhere. And then the foot attached to that. So it's this overlapping, this overlapping action here that uh, we're kind of missing. So this, the, the back here kind of blocking the view from the base of the leg and then the the thigh blocking the view to most of the the lower leg and then the foot being behind all of that uh, that's really going to help you know kind of sell the, the structure of the anatomy the the volumes that you're dealing with here super cool animal otherwise very nicely structured you got all these muscles in here hell yeah like i would i would add that in the shading a little bit all these muscles here Muscles always make things look cooler. You can have some, uh, some indications here for the leg, flat leg. Mostly flat. Shading on top here. Got glutes here, little, nice little butt. Uh, it can be super subtle, but yeah, like having those those hints, hints of anatomy, uh, uh, visible through the skin. Nice touch. And especially since you you did it all here, might as well include it. Yeah. And this lizard might be might be cool. Like there's it's such a like a nice area here where there's not much. Might be cool to add like some some patterns or something like some uh, like a cheetah. It's a really fast lizard, or some some stripes like a zebra. Or just some whatever, just some birthmarks or some some patterns that they have. Maybe like the the cooler males have, have bolder patterns. Maybe they have more repetition in the patterns. The the weak males only have like a few. Um yeah.
I don't think the front legs need as much as much uh as much work. Kind of kind of works like that. Yeah, man. What the hell's really cool stuff. So here we are, with Alan. Uh, Alan, and uh, I'll uh, I'll be checking that out in about ten minutes when we come back from a short break. All right, let's uh, resume, shall we? So, um, uh, um, so, um, Alan, I hope you are doing well. This week, I made the stylized portrait. What do you think that can be? What do you can, what do you think can be improved in this image and or the process? I struggle a lot with the hair. I use a flat brush uh, to put in the major shapes, but it's had a lot of problems, but I've had a, it's had a lot of problems, but I've had a lot of problems rendering it. I've also been doing value studies for the past month, and I'm having a hard time with the blending and making it match the reference. <clears throat> the reference is: Can you show how you would render these forms and how to use the mixer brush properly? Because whenever I use them, it looks like I just smudged all the paint. Well, um. Mixer brush, mixer brush. Yeah, mixer brush is one of those things where um, it, it it seems pointless until until <laughs> until you find a use for it. No, that's the dumbest advice ever. Um, well, let me show you what it does. It's just. It works really well in some cases, not all the time, but in some cases it works ex exceptionally well, especially when you want to go faster, you know? So um, for most of my career, I've never used it. And it's only like after I've, that's not true, but towards the end of my career at Blizzard, I, I started to pick it up a little bit and like play around with it. But it's, uh, yeah, I use it in very specific scenarios. So. I'll use it for like to generate texture a, a lot, but that's gonna be like when the when the painting is the most most done, you know, and you just want to just to shade it differently, maybe like add a, a slight twist to the shading or something like that. So <clears throat> let's say you have a let's say you have something like this, and you want to treat the edges maybe a little bit more rounded, or you want to add details like quickly, or uh, or you want to blend something, but but better than you would be able to with just like a smudge brush or something. Then the mixer brush is really nice for that. <clears throat> you can source like a... You can source this whole thing here. And then when you draw, you're kind of like drawing a cylinder, right? So it's one brush stroke, but it has the shading too. Like when, or to draw cables or like branches and stuff like that. Uh, super useful. So imagine like drawing a bunch of a bunch of tubes together. Like in a, in a laboratory... Laborato laboratory somewhere uh awesome stuff for that and you can also get like some depth this way like it's coming towards us you know like it's like free shading basically for for the stuff that you're drawing super useful in some cases um but let's say you wanted to like round out maybe these uh these edges here you can zoom out a lot on it so that you get just like a few pixels and then zoom back And then maybe yeah, and then zoom back, zoom back out, bigger brush, and then you can draw on top. And it's just the same thing, but just bigger. This is not a great example because I don't have enough pixels to play around with here, but um, yeah, let's say like you wanted to to damage this stuff here and not have to spend too much time like playing around with the shading or anything like that. Just grab what you have here already, and then you can add like easy cuts this way. Cut and diagonal like that, and it, it keeps this, the same shading. It's just, it's it's all free, free bees, you know. So for for surface detail at the end, um, when you already have a lot of shading information that you can that, that you can source from, and also depending on like the brushes that you use, you know, you can get some really cool stuff. to something anyways um 
So I use it a lot for that and I'll use it for, for backgrounds often too. Um, it just allows you to create a lot of texture again for free. So let's say you want to draw. Uh, let me grab uh, an explosion here. There we go. That's perfect. Paste. So let's say you want to, you you like this explosion, be like, I want it to be like twice as big. Well. <laughs> well, well then. You can source part of it. And then you can paint with the actual explosion. Oh. Better than this, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, anyways. So for backgrounds, you know, imagine like you have a background full of uh, full of leaves or like your ground texture that you want to maintain. Source it with a mixer brush and then you can kind of apply it everywhere else. Uh, mixer brush is one of those things that's like a like some cool smoke too here. Mixer brush is one of those things where it's uh, like the artists. I mean, that's that's a silly thing to say that applies to everything, but uh, like the artist makes a big difference. It's like how like the ways that you can find to like the things that you can find to source and how you apply that that source material. Uh, like it's a big deal to be able to source shading and color and like all this this kind of information versus being able to source a single color. There's a lot more potential that it kind of unlocks and you kind of have to explore, play around with it a bit. Uh, use it when, when for things that you might not you know feel like you need that uh, that you need it for and then sometimes you'll find like unsuspected uses for it that you're like oh that helps so much and the goal again here it's just help save time and sometimes um helps yeah just get like a cooler cooler look to things something that's maybe a little bit more painterly or so you want more of that, that kind of texture. Um, 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 um. Oh, another cool thing that I love to use it for. Let's say you want to, you want to draw like a bunch of grass, right? So I have, let's say you have like a green background. Right, nothing too interesting and then you're like all right so i'm gonna draw some grass on here uh maybe some darker grass first so that the lighter grass can can look nice against it oh uh, <laughs> you know that's something not bad but you could also use the mixer whoops you could also use the mixer brush and uh, with a little bit of planning let's say uh draw a sphere then draw a little bit of shading to that sphere. So a little bit brighter up top. A little bit darker down here. And there's the gradient. There we go. Maybe a little darker. And then you can use to uh, you can use that to source your grass instead. So I'm gonna. Grab this whole sphere, all right? A whole sphere selected, more or less. And then when you draw, your grass is shading already. Ooh, hacks! That's way better. Yeah, it's power. The power of the mixer brush. Anyways, um. So that's why that's what I mean. You know, like you can find ways, different different things to source from, different different little things here to different ways to use the brushes that you that you might have never thought about. So a lot of opportunities here. It's like a, this this unexplored, this un, uncharted world <laughs> that you get to discover when you start using the mixer brush. Very very fun. So, uh, I mean, you're talking about these, are, these studies really good. So, I'm not sure. 
I've been doing various things for the past month, and I'm having a hard time with the blending and making it match the reference. Ah, blending. I mean, your your studies are good. They're really good. Sure, like you can look at the like this the more uh, more subtle details, like uh, like this stuff here, how it's a little bit darker there in the center. Like you have kind of like this, this darker rim before it transitions to the to the light part. Uh, and that's because it was just going to the shadows normally, but then it's like oh, but now there's more light here because of the bounce light. That's all transitioning to shadows as it normally would it gets a little darker again a little brighter again because of all that bounce light less bounce light up here more bounce light towards the surface it's on But I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Like, that was all nice to me. And once again, it's one of those things, like, it doesn't need to match the reference one-to-one -one, as long as you get, you know, what's important out of it, which is the overall lighting, the overall shading, like, the logic between, between the, the lights, the shadows, uh, the actual shadow, uh, like, the dark side here. Like, the difference in value between the, the area that's most lit versus the other the other parts here where that transition happens uh, the values themselves like how dark should it be how bright should it be how much of an influence the bounce light has in, in the shadows here and like lighting up that shadow and the difference maybe at the base here like between where here uh, the area where you get a little bit of uh, ambient occlusion because of the proximity to the surface versus another area here farther away from it where you're not going to get that ambient occlusion effect as much so it's a lot lighter and it's just those relationships that that this study is really good for the the, the finish of it not important i would say But yeah, those look really good for what, you know, for a light and a, a volume study. And then here, my sketch. Very nice. I'm super good. Struggle with the hair. Um, yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a, a little bit of shadow, maybe. In the hair, like the the structure is cool. The uh, like you can clearly tell what the haircut is like. It's just like here in in there, for example. Like you might maybe expect to have a little bit more shadow, just like you have like on the side of the side of the face here. The ears are pretty dark, you know. The ears the same color as the skin as the rest of the skin. It's just that they're darker here because there's less light reaching that area. Same thing underneath the uh, underneath the bangs here. So you can just select. help increase that contrast here make it seem like the the hair is casting a lot of shadow on the rest of the face going all the way to dark you know just like you do with your eyes here it goes you know the center of the eye is dark because there's no light it's a hole leading into the eyeball and then in when the light reaches inside the eyeball it doesn't really come out lots so it shows as black same thing here in between maybe between these it's really deep maybe here very deep also again this is just like folds like right? two folds two two different pieces coming together right in between here like the light that ends up in that 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 well uh, will never escape and so it gets it gets dark That, I think. I think 
do the trick. Because, yeah, nice shape, nice distribution of uh, these ribbons. Maybe it goes a little, a little too high, just, just for style, you know, for style sake, style sake. Having that, that haircut kind of follow the contour of our head a little bit better, but. Helps, Alan. Uh, dress, nice, very nice face, very well shaded. Uh, in the hair, like in the back here, real quick, we can do can do the same thing again. Different, different sections behind here, the neck maybe a little darker, where the light's less likely to escape from. today is pretty girl with nice clothes part two because i wasn't having especially good week but more now that i <laughs> love how you did that it did clearly makes it like this is what's coming up next that's an artistic choice very nice makes it easy for me to, to read this um apart from studying clothes uh clothing folds and adding dynamism to still pose the main focus of this exercise was stylization confident line art and lighting make several object uh several object <laughs> Several objectives in mind instead of practicing only one single thing has helped to make it look better as a final piece than previous studies. I think silk or sheet or nitpicky. Yes. Count on me. Um, and so here, you know, um, so about about the first year of art school, uh, I think that's lots of yeah, awesome, awesome to hear all of this. Um, and so the main issue to summarize to summarize the stuff here is that um, so sometimes you know understanding the theory behind the concepts uh, is nice, but in practice it doesn't come out nice, or not as nice as as you would want it. Sometimes it feels like um, stuff that that you might even you know, being be uh, going backwards in some things like stuff that used to feel easy now doesn't as much so i mean this is something that i feel like everybody everybody struggles with to some extent and let me put up my favorite chart so i think it it uh explains a lot of it <clears throat> all right so you know ignore kind of like the stuff that's written here but um but essentially you're like that's what most people go through and uh and it's just a matter of reminding your brain that this is actually the case so initially you know a lot of people a lot of the majority of amateur artists the majority of artists um that are not really pursuing any academic studies you know they're not really trying they're just like having fun whatever uh most of them will will probably feel like they're around around here on the chart so very little experience very little understanding of the the fundamentals of how things actually work how things actually are and um and a lot of confidence as a result 
So that's like a lot of copying, a lot of, uh, a lot of like tracing, a lot of copying other artists. And you're like, wow, I can trace, I can do the, the same anime eye, cool. Or I can draw the same, the same kind of nose as this other artist. Wow, I must be amazing. Um, but then the second that you start to learn about, about it a little bit more, when you start to gain more experience, when you start to understand how things work, uh, the like fundamentals, all that stuff. Like when you when you understand <laughs> more, that's what happens with your confidence. Whee! And the zero is right here. That's hundred percent. That's that's near zero. That's really low. And that's I think everybody everybody goes goes through that phase. And after a while, you know, after a while, you you understand more and more and more. You practice, you practice, you practice. Like professional artists, I'm thinking they're probably more in this in this range here. So on their way up, getting more confidence, but but still realizing that oh man, there's so much stuff that I don't know. I have a lot of experience. Um, I know so much, but still, confidence almost never goes back to 100% because you know, the more you know, the more you realize that there's stuff you don't know, and I think this is important to keep in mind. You know, when feeling this way. Um, because most of you will start somewhere around here, so somewhere at the beginning, right? We don't have a whole lot of experience. And then the more you learn, the more it feels like, like you're able to understand your mistakes better. You're able to spot mistakes that maybe you weren't able to spot before. So you're satisfied before, but it was just a satisfaction out of ignorance, essentially. Um, might also be that, uh, you feel like you're regressing, but it's just that you're, yeah, you're, you're able to observe better. So you're able to spot your mistakes more. Um, also, a lot of the times, uh, something else that might compound this effect, uh, this, uh, yeah, this effect is, uh, people, like, you'll start to feel maybe like, because you have the experience, you should be doing things that are more advanced. Um, and, and you're raising your own bar all the time, like the difficulty actually gets higher and higher using references that are the harder to work from, harder poses, um, being a little bit more like, a, yeah, maybe more foreshortening, foreshortening, more foreshortening, uh, uh, designs that are more intricate. And, and suddenly, if you can't, you know, if you can deliver at the same level that you were delivering the stuff that, that was easy, then you're like, Oh, man, I can't, I can't even do this now for sure. I must be I must be worse. I'm not saying this is you. But a lot of the times that's that's part of it and so with knowledge comes uh comes a different perspective on things and and that perspective is usually like a of just self-realization that oh ah uh, that's why i suck and then you just realize that yeah there's just this whole world of things that you didn't even think about before like you were satisfied with your skills but now you realize oh there's an explanation for everything. There's just there's so much out there to learn. And the confidence takes a little bit of a nosedive. So even if you weren't at hundred percent, I'm not saying you were, but uh, but usually this some some that some of that effect is true for most people. Um. Trying to see if I missed something here. Um, so yeah, so the last part here, let's address that. Um, so solution, you know, uh, for that to feel better about this is lower your expectations. N not so much. No, that's not true. Don't lower the expectations. Keep your expectations the way they are, but lower the, the difficulty. You lower the challenge so that you can so that you get the effect of uh, of going back to like a, a starting zone in an RPG as the more powerful you and then just destroying the trash mobs that used to be, you know, at your level, but now you're so much higher level that you just explode them in one in one shot. So it's like I feel like a lot of people will do this, you know, with, with just with their progression overall. They get better, so they tackle stuff that's harder. Um, just don't do that. Just tackle stuff that's easy, like a easier like a pose like a standing pose like this I'm not saying this is easier for you I'm just talking in general but yeah like something that's before something that's not too much of a challenge and then just 
aced it. Just, just destroy it. They do it really, really, really well. Born in the nosedive. Uh, oh no. But see, yeah, this is like a coding person, but that's that's kind of it, right? Like a little app that does most of it for you, and then you start to learn. Uh, I'll just edit this myself and, and tweak it. Wait a second. There's a lot, a lot of stuff here. Uh, oh, oh no, it's starting to break. I don't know what, what I'm doing. I need to learn. I need to look into this. I need to look into this. I need to look into this. Oh my God. What have I, what have I unearthed? I should have never gone there. But, uh, but that's everybody. I will say everybody goes through that. Everybody that keeps going will eventually end up here in, uh, in the fun part where you know a lot and you can you can deliver you have confidence in your skills now you've practiced them enough you know you've learned so much stuff and then you've also practiced it so that you can deliver it properly uh <laughs> I feel like i'm just repeating the same thing but um so unsure about my direction uh, because i have no idea what to do what i should do next i've already burnt out the last need of guidance um so yeah Reduce the challenge, find things or not, that that are within your comfort zone for the most part, maybe like 90% within your comfort zone and only a little bit of extra stuff that you're like not too sure about that you'll that you'll be working on. Uh, but mostly comfortable, mostly stuff that you're that you feel that you have under control. And start there. And then maybe, you know, as you progress more and more, you can change that ratio, but Confidence is such a is such an important factor in art. It's so easy to to ruin, and and it's everything. If you lose it, you're done. So yeah, like those hurdles, like those walls that are in front of you. Just, just get them as low as possible so that you can only just you just need to step over them to pass them instead of having to climb like a hundred feet every time. And I feel the same way. It's funny. I feel exactly the same way with YouTube. Um, like every time I try to, uh, like every time I sit down to draw something and I'm like, how can this be applied to YouTube? Uh, oh, now I have all these subscribers. I need to do something that's better than before. And then that stresses me out. And then I'm like, ah, maybe this is not going to be good enough. And then I overthink everything now. And it's really, really hard to get out of this, this mind, this mindset. But, um, But now, yeah, now it's to the point where my, my solution for myself is just I'm going to draw something that is so, so not up to par with what I would want for YouTube that there's no way in hell it's going to end up there. So that, that, that link here will never be, will never be um, or that bridge will never be crossed. There's no, like, this drawing is just, it's a small doodle. You know, I'm just starting something simple. So for, for YouTube, I'll worry about that later. And, and oftentimes, you know, that little doodle turns into something big. You know, the second that you start working on it, you're like, ah, maybe, maybe I'll push a bit more. Maybe I'll push a bit more. And just start with something that's easy. Start with something that feels comfortable already. I don't know that this is comfortable for you. It sure does look comfortable for you. Great proportions. Uh, nice simple shading, nice presentation, it's a cute character, cute face. That's really nice drawing.
maybe maybe the faults here is a little too much. Trying to look at like trying to get maybe more of that that kind of pattern here. But I, I mean, I really don't have much to say about this one. It's really well executed. And there's so many ways that you could put that you could push this into something that looks like unbelievable. Uh, I mean, you could render it like crazy, you know, like render it as well as, as this is rendered, for example, or, uh, or you could, I don't know, add something to her design, something that makes her look completely different or uh, or it could be just the background here. You could start, I don't know, like in like a, maybe she's like a, in a field of, I don't know, like a super nice environment or something like that. And she's she's um, she's shaded more like a Ghibli character with, with uh, like mostly flat shading, that kind of stuff. And having that background, that rendered background in contrast might look super cool. Um, it's like when you start simple, when you start, yeah, when you start more simple, you, you open up a lot more doors, I feel like. Yeah, so and like I Alexandra the I can't tell you how many how many years I spent in that comfortable zone. And that's what got me my job at Blizzard. So like being comfortable is not necessarily a bad thing. You you need a little bit of discomfort to grow, yes. But I would always make sure that's like I said, that you're mostly comfortable at which about what uh, about what you're tackling. Just a little bit of the discomfort. Never go into something, um, unless unless you you love pain. But never go into something where it's going to be mostly something that's uncharted for you, mostly stuff that you've never done, and just maybe a little little bit of you know that that you know that you can deliver. Uh, that's great recipe to feel yeah to to end up here and kind of stay there for a long time to turn this 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 bottom here into more like a plateau that never recovers. Um, Yeah, like <laughs> I've been going through the same thing now. It's, it's just different, different thing, different uh, about a different thing. But like, I completely relate with what you're what you're expressing, and that's helped me a lot. Like, uh, and you guys know, I haven't been producing producing that much art recently. That's because of YouTube. That's it's always on my mind. It's 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 annoying, and now I'm starting to be a lot more productive again just because i've i've just lowered the bar a lot and it's just the, the entry now the, the 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 process of the process of starting to make art feels a lot easier to get into it because it's it's just going to be a doodle it's not going to be anything too big i'll just start with just a face and then next thing you know you've drawn the entire character and you're like mm, that actually looks really good all right now i'm going to add something else something else something else Yeah, the only thing I didn't add about uh, uh, the only thing I didn't add in that video was that I also it was a, a video that I made for myself <laughs> in a way, and I I thought it would apply to a lot of people too. I had that bit in the audio, but I just I just removed it because didn't didn't really help the subject of the video or anything, and it made it longer for no reason. But uh, it was more of a a. a What's the word? I, uh... What the hell? Not self healing, but whatever. I forget the word.
Moving on to Nathan. The idea behind the first few, uh, before the first drawing, and by the way, I hope to see you again, at least monthly. Um, so the second one, um, uh, uh, so the idea behind the first drawing was uh, the house of a retired knight in the woods. The second one is a sketch for an inn, a tavern in the city, and um, I aim, I am aiming to make concepts for a couple of other medieval buildings as well. So. Also showing the inside of each one and the person that lives in it. Ooh. What do you think of these so far in terms of the design and overall presentation for production concepts? Nice idea. Cathartic, yeah, yeah. And I had I had written a different word and uh, I'm trying to remember my script. Uh, but yeah, that's that's totally it though. That probably fits better. Almost looks like almost looks like a three D model. Damn, that was good, man. That's the other one here. Great shape, uh, shapes. Everything is very consistent across the whole building. Yeah, I mean, uh, presentation is probably the the biggest issue here for me. Uh, just how it's it's hard to read it from like small scale. Um, just a just uh just has to do with the lights, the lights, the lights. Mm -hmm. So. The roof, you know, the roof is really dark. Um, and that might be the case in the shadows, but under like, under bright sunlight, grass, grass is like this dark green color. So if the grass can get this bright in comparison, uh, this probably can get a lot brighter as well. Almost probably sharing the same, the same value-ish as the grass itself. And, uh, and then yeah, like a brighter roof is gonna, look nice against a much darker background right now and like this value here the blue the blue of the the, the blue of the tree in the back and kind of you know we kind of lose the roof it's almost like the roof just disappears in the foliage so mm, a little bit of extra light here i think will go a long way In the wood too, maybe. I mean, the wood's already, it's not bad, but uh, it could be a little brighter in some of these uh, some of these cases here. Like this side looks very similar to the other side, but you know, it's like a different face of the, of the beam. And so it should probably be slightly lighter, the one that faces the sun more directly. Anyways, we'll get to that later. Let's brighten up this roof. This rough roof. Uh, let's say the lights coming from the front of the house for the most part. So anything that's not facing the front directly will be a little bit less bright. That's facing the front, that's going to be full brightness. Uh, facing up and the front, it's 
more light. Okay, so let's try with that. Slap the multiply there on top here. Not multiply, overlay. Less on that side, it's not facing the, the light source just as directly. Actually, maybe this side here is too bright. Uh, yeah, but that, but probably even more. So, yeah, the wood would be probably the next one here. Making sure that. Oh, that was a little bit brighter and it's just so that the house reads better that's all definitely recommend that you know you've worked so hard in this house it looks so good uh, presentation needs to be as good uh, and still the back's probably too too damn dark let's brighten this up reduce the contrast a little bit that contrast levels don't compete with the house itself. The house should have a monopoly monopoly on contrasts. Levels, get rid of that black. Oops, wrong layer. <laughs> Brighter backgrounds. That's that. <laughs> Let me undo. Show before after. See if that made any difference. Background's too too bright now, but nothing going in that direction helps the the house stand out. Now it's all about the house. That's what's important. Um, yeah, you can definitely darken the background a bit more, but. Uh, yeah, display that stuff. Man, it's a cool house. Uh, love all the little details too in the roof here. So yeah, design, spot on. Presentation, so work on that for the next one. The next one, for that one too, definitely deserves it. Yeah, man. Killer stuff. Really, really cool. Peace out, Emilio. Oh, you're welcome, Alexandra. I just saw that a little late. Alright. Uh, who... Who do I think this is? Jordan. All right, Jordan. So, 
I uh, hope you're having a good weekend too. I sure am. I've been checking out some art, improving improving my observation skills. <laughs> All day long. I created this piece to practice lighting and also to try and improve my rendering. Just looking for any feedback on things that could improve both of them. So quick question, I have recently set up a website for commissions. Where would you say is the best place to start getting on it? Uh, the best place to start on getting it out there. Um, website for commissions. Honestly, you probably don't need a website for that. I would just have it as a um, um, either a saved like a highlight on on Instagram, so people can just tap on it and they see kind of like your menu. Like this is what I offer. This is how much for that. How much for this? How much for that? Uh, and then do the same thing, like a, a pinned post on your um, Twitter account. You know, so that's the first thing that people see, the menu of, uh, of what you offer and the price. And uh, be, be very clear about it. You know, this is what's included, uh, how many revisions you're, you're allowing. Uh, beyond that, it's, you know, X amount, of, uh, X amount of dollars for any further revisions or stuff like that. Like be very, very specific about it. But you know, social media is probably the easiest because that's where you'll get most traffic, uh, most traffic anyways. So Twitter, Instagram, usually the best ones for that, that kind of stuff. That's what I would, uh, that's what I would do. Or like if you're on uh, like DeviantArt or uh, a lot of people do that on DeviantArt, like um, on their profile have like, a, yeah, their, their menu. So I would do that there. As well, if you have an account, Website is cool, but um, feels website is usually more like professional. Like you will you will expect like expect a uh, like a working professional to have a website, you know, for like freelance work. So not so much commissions, but more like where clients, like uh, like studios, might be able to go to the website and see. Oh, okay, that's how much he charges. Oh, yeah, we can totally afford that. Blah, blah, blah. Discuss with their team and then go from there. But uh, for commissions, you want the most exposure possible. Social media. Um, and here, man, that's really cool. Um, three things that I think, um, I think you could look into here. Uh, number one, anatomy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Get back in there. Get back in there, I said. Um, anatomy, number one. So um, I look at this hand here. That hand looks cool, nice and big. This hand looks much shorter, much smaller and broken. <laughs> so yeah, I would just like extend here the knuckles. So that it looks more like he's holding with the knuckles facing down, like a, a, a strong hold, you know, like this. This is a weak hold. Uh, that's a lot stronger when everything here is like one straight line. It lines up the bones and so it's more it's, it's just a stronger hold uh, just, that's when that's how you, you punch too like you don't want ever you want <laughs> i can't even speak man you don't want to ever punch when you're like this or like that you're gonna destroy your wrist and so same idea here that looks strong lock the wrists line it up with the knuckles Knuckles right here, so this is gonna be the bottom of the fingers. Side of the fingers, knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Uh, okay, so yeah, hands, knuckle, fingers down here. have a lot more strength this way um, and uh, yeah the hands making sure that's at least as big as this so maybe a little bit bigger than what I did here even um, so that's number one that's it for, for the anatomy I think the rest is pretty cool portions are good um, the other thing would be the um, the colors so kind of adjusting the levels 
uh, of your saturation here. So it's very saturated. It looks like a uh, just like everything is exciting. You know, it's like a firework. But really, what you'd want to do instead is just one firework, and then the rest are kind of done. It's like the final one. That's it. Um, and so knocking down the saturation for this green and maybe introducing a little bit of a, a cool color because you have a lot of warm colors in here. So this nice, like warm green, warm yellow, uh, lime green, and a lot of warmth here with the orange, the red. So introducing a little bit of a, a little bit of cool hues in here might help quite a bit. In the shadows, you know, you can imagine maybe some bounce light in here. Uh, it doesn't matter actually. This blue always helps. So in the shadows, whenever you have dark color, introduce a little bit of blue. Cool down that that green, whenever you can. When the green is not being lit directly by any light source, that's when you strike. <laughs> uh, and also, yeah, it helps uh, remove a little bit of saturation too. You select a, a blue that's not too saturated. And this way, you know, it allows you to, to light up the bits that are more in the shadows. It makes it easier to, uh, to appreciate all the details that you did here. No preview on that, are they? But the layer was empty. Uh, oh, it's starting to be sluggish. What's going on? Let me save this. Preemptive save. Damn it! No, I saved over. Oh, so stupid. <laughs> exactly what I didn't want to do. Uh, dirt, 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 dirt. Oh well, we won't get a before and after. Um. So, anyways, cooling down or desaturating your greens or your colors in general, um, adding blue helps with that. You know, like a desaturated blue for your shadows, or just just straight up color picking here and desaturating it desaturating it a lot so for your fingers here just desaturated saturated more like a, a lime green instead and you save the saturation for the really important parts saturation is like your your spices don't put too much just a little bit at the end mm. Can do the same maybe with the oranges here you can tone down these oranges only some of them so that you can kind of direct which ones you want people to look at so maybe those ones here not that important maybe it's those ones here up there around the face that you really want people to spot maybe a little bit of blue here too why not the opposite side Cool down that color. And then around the face, you can it. let it rip. Um, 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 um. And then uh, and then the lighting, I think, I think could help here. It's a little bit more light. Um, so like whitening everything. Um, I like the rim lights, but I don't think I would change that. But now, I feel, like I said, it's kind of like a, a firework that's happening everywhere. It's it's 
very interesting everywhere. So we want to just make one spot more interesting than that. So more lights that usually helps. Maybe more lights around the face here. Do So kind of the yeah like the direct light that's hitting him in the face make that light a little bit more intense mm, too not too intense a little bit more so that should help um highlight this area over the rest And a lot of brightness tends to also yeah, kill the saturation. Because we're adding white essentially. We're not adding pigments, we're just adding white. So this helps us like focus on this area of the face. All of this combined, I think, would help with presentation. Make this guy feel more like the, the final firework. Um, yeah, so a little bit of anatomy with the hands, super minor, uh, super, <laughs> super minor. Um, saturation of colors. Make sure that the, the anywhere that's not the focal point should have a little bit less saturation. Um, introducing some blue helps tone that down and then uh, the lights the main light source to really help point us to the direction of you know the where's the spotlight where's the spotlight going where's the area of interest the focal point his face and then just light that up a little bit more so that it stands out from the rest what the hell's dude? Super cool looking. Um, moving on to two to two. Two to two to a new a new person. Tabaxi. I um probably ruining your name. Tabaxi. 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 Damn it. Let me know how to pronounce it. If you uh, if you mind me butchering it. I don't like to butcher people's name. Um, but also, welcome to uh, welcome to the streams. And uh, I'm excited to check out what you have here. Uh, so this is my first time posting and I would like some critique on my avatar image. Color the grayscale image with the gradient map technique. Jordan. Uh, makes this use that I wanted a night scene for this piece, but I feel like it, a lot of the details and colors are lost in the final image. Is there a way I could keep my night scene and still make the character read better? Yes. I'm glad you're asking. Um, I'm just grabbing a few images here. Um, <laughs> of night shots that are still pretty bright because the brightness is really what what you want it to be uh, you have the power to change all of that just like um it's like photographers you know they can change the, the amount of light that goes into the lens or the the length of the exposure and uh, 
the more light comes in, the more the, the longer the exposure is, the brighter the image. It's the same night scene. It might be like a, a pitch black night scene, but if you let it, uh, you know, capture enough light, it uh, yeah, you'll end up with something that, that can be pretty bright. Like, uh, trying to find one here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, that's a night scene. That looks more like a day scene. Pretty bright. Uh, maybe some some up here. Mm. That's a night scene, but you can still read everything, right? Nothing goes to like pitch black that you can't you can't see what it is anymore. Uh, also, not the best example, but 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 but. but. Uh, but you can control that. You control the amount of light. And so, for night scenes, I would almost recommend that you treat it just like a day scene. Nothing different. Um, you know, hope, hoping that you have your, uh, your light sources on different layers so that you can just play with them independently. Let's say, uh, yeah, let's just turn it down. Or, like change the opacity so that uh, they're less intense, more intense, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, and then, yeah, it would just be a matter of not turning them up as much as the rest, and maybe changing the colors a little bit so it's more, maybe more blue, less of a yellow. Like you know, there's no sun in here. Uh, more like the color of the moon, so light, light blue instead. But yes, make it brighter, and you can tell, right? When when things too bright, you'll see it in your curves. So if you see all, like the majority of your values here, um, kind of just hugging one of the sides, usually it'll be too dark. So when it's like in this, uh, like on the, on this one, this one block here, that in the 25% of darkness, when, when most of your colors are found in that, usually that's the sun that's your image is too dark. So what you want to do is just reach in here and then get more light out of this. It's not gonna hold up because um, a lot of this stuff is just pure black, so we're not we won't be able to uh, get much much out of it. But uh, but now if we check back again, now the spread is a lot better, right? Now we're using we're not just um, stuck in that left quadrant. We have is it a quadrant? That left quarter of the uh, of the graph. Instead, it's a lot more spread out, and uh, as a result, you know, we can read a lot more. A lot more of the information here. So. My recommendation, always treat night scenes as day scenes. Just change the color of the light and, and darken it just a little bit. But uh, but just the color of the light should already be enough to, uh, yeah, to sell the fact that it's at night. You really don't need to go too dark. Uh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's a really cool scene. Like, Side street. I love the light here on the ground. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, also my wish is uh, with this program is to rebuild my art skills from scratch. So forget bad drawing habits and learn good new ones. With that in mind, do you think that for my next critique, it'd be more beneficial for me to submit, for example, mannequin of gesture drawing from term one, nude figure drawing? So that depends of your um, of your current skills, you know, uh, regarding the different fundamentals. So there are a number of fundamentals, and uh, you know, more likely than not, some of them, most of them, are not at the same level. Uh, you just practice different things based on your preferences. So some will be better, some will be pretty bad uh, in comparison. And so, yeah, what we want is to just level up all of those fundamentals so that they're all like pretty solid, and then from there, that's when you uh, start work um, start tackling uh, the more uh, uh, the more advanced stuff like design and color theory and like this stuff that will make use of the, those fundamentals and so when you hear what we have a little bit of perspective uh, like one point perspective pretty much there's nothing too complicated I don't know that you that you build the street or that you paint it over something that existed already but uh, but it looks nice so if you if you built it all 
I think uh, perspective wise, pretty solid. So maybe that's one of the classes that you could that you could skip ahead, or like you just skim through maybe a little faster. Um, character wise, anatomy, gesture, construction. That one's a little bit harder for me to judge at this point. Uh, and characters got good proportions. You have a little bit of foreshortening already in here. Uh, so yeah, it's not, not easy. But I don't know how much of a command over, uh, over anatomy you have over gesture and, um, and also for the next time, you know, um, if you could let me know what your goal is, like what you're, what you're trying to do with your art. Yes. You want to rebuild your skill from scratch, but, but for what purpose, you know, is it just to, uh, is it just to just get better at drawing just like, uh, just like uh, I want to get better, at, faster at go-kart, but I don't necessarily want to be a professional, <laughs> professional racer. Um, or is it uh, so more of a hobby or is it more of a professional goal that you have that you want to eventually work? I don't know where, I don't know for who, uh, but is it more that is it more professional? And if it is ex what exactly so all of those stuff, all of the, all <laughs> you can tell the stream has been going on for a while when my, when my mouth is not complying with my brain. Um, but, yeah, what is it for exactly? What's what's your your goal with your art exactly? The more precise it is, the better is it, the better it is for me just to give you feedback. So, um, so yeah, let me know if you can. Um, but let's say you like to draw characters. You know, there's there's a couple things that uh, that you should do all the time. So like gesture drawing, that's something that you should be doing doing very often um, if you're into characters. It's kind of like a, it's part of your diet, really. It's just as important as a uh, as eating good food, you know, to stay healthy. Uh, to be a good character artist, you need to do gesture drawing quite often. Um, same with uh, the you know your anatomy knowledge. I don't know exactly. I can't really see a whole lot from this. Uh, 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 design wise, you have a lot of cool stuff in here, a lot of cool shapes, very unique, very unique character. But. Uh, but the colors and the uh, maybe like the shape language could there, there'd be a lot of opportunity uh, opportunities there to uh, to improve. Um, so what I would recommend is yes, for sure. Like, don't try. To, I, I wouldn't skip anything. I would I would at least give it a go and see how it goes. You know, because a lot of a lot of the time. Uh, if you're more experienced, you know, the fundamentals, they might have been, you might have learned them a long time ago and they're, you know, you're kind of you know, forgetting about them or maybe uh, yeah, a little refresher never hurts. So it'll be a good test for you as well to know, you know, can you do gesture drawing pretty easily? Can you, do you have that, uh, do you have a lot of issues with anatomy? Do you have a lot of issues with poses? Um, and then, yeah, it'll, it'll let me know as well how good of a control you have over that. So anyways, I'm about this piece here. Uh, brightness, very important. Other than that, um, it's quite blue. So like your focal point is a little weak in here. Uh, like the red definitely helps to, to bring it back, to bring it back here. But, uh, but it's the sword that mostly stands out, not the character, uh, her, I want to say herself, himself, itself, probably herself, who knows? Um, so composition, uh, definitely a little bit more lacking compared to the, the rest here. Uh, use of colors too. Very saturated everywhere. So yeah, we can definitely play with saturation to, to guide the eyes. Uh, just the, the, the balance in the piece too. A little strange, like your character is very, uh, uh, very focused to the left. And then this entire, like this, this big chunk here of the piece really doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose. Maybe not that much, maybe, maybe even this much here. Like you could probably get rid of that. It wouldn't change much. Uh, if anything, it would center your character better. And now the composition will work a little better. Um, 
few things that you usually try to avoid, but like these weird tangents where where things just happen to line up perfectly with something else for no reason, like how the blade kind of touches the edge of the canvas. Like try to avoid that. Have it go p way past, if anything, or, or stop it much sooner than that. Um, and then, and then, yeah, design, I think, is going to be a, uh, a big part here, especially if you like to design your characters. Like, cool, new characters. Uh, a lot of ways that we can, a lot of... Uh, rules that uh, that should unlock or allow you to maybe understand better different decisions uh, uh, and maybe introduce new new ways of, of tackling characters. Anyways, I see a lot of potential here, so I'm excited. It's a very cool scene that you've constructed constructed here. Like it feels like you could you could walk in there. There's just a lot of stuff also that we could that we could adjust to really make that work a lot better um so yeah i'm excited to see what else you got in store and um that helps a little bit at least henry all right draw the muscles and direction of the muscle fibers on the torso on various photos of topless people uh the only, the only thing here is uh like the fiber here for the uh for the delt so Delts attach along this line here, like the spine of the scapula, right? And uh, the back, the posterior head of the delt. Attach something like this. And so this is the attachment point. This is where it's kind of coming from. So all the fibers will kind of follow that here. Instead, actually, I have it right here. Boom. So see, like they attach. That's where they. That's <laughs> trying to hide my face. Come on. This part here is where it attaches onto the uh, the scapula, in the spine of the scapula, and then from there, straight line to the uh, to the insertion point here. So it starts wide and kind of tapers down into a single point here. So wide, 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 and then converging to the same point. Back here, starts a little further out here. Same idea, start out here wide and then point towards that one point on the humerus. Yeah, like more like this. That's a lot, a lot more accurate. Just keep in mind, like the the shape for the uh, the trapezius, always like this. So I like a split down the middle here. Those look great, man. Really good. Um, Nicely done. Look at all that red meat. Yummy. Like this here. The back muscle, just uh, just to make sure, but yeah, that goes towards the sacrum it points to your butt crack <laughs> boing, 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 boing. right here point towards the tailbone The, the anterior head of the, the deltoid, uh, lateral half here of the um, of the clavicles. So make sure that it reaches there at least, like more on this side. This one here is pretty good. Like a little bit of a 
gap in between chest and the shoulder. Little, little hole there. Uh, yeah, shoulder a little, little, little further, a little further in. Really good stuff otherwise. Yeah, even this one here is tricky, uh, tricky one to get right. This one here, like the, would kind of wrap around the skull and touch in the back here. Small difference, but um, it'll always kind of slide underneath the jaw. Like it won't, it won't kind of, you won't go like this, doing, you know, it'll always be stuck under the jaw. So it'll always contour the jawline and then attach in the back. Yeah, um, same idea here with the shoulder, like the back shoulder, especially when you have your arms in the front, there's a lot of stretch in the back. So that back delta, that back head, that uh, posterior head here, attaching on the spine of the scapula will be a lot more stretched. Boing. Middle one will be kind of a little, little stretch, but not really. And then the front delt will be very flexed, the opposite. Other than that, Henry, you, uh, you crushed it. This look awesome. A plus. That's not true. It wasn't, <coughs> excuse me. It wasn't perfect. A minus. <laughs> Oh, that helps. Oh, that helps. Hope that helps. Sam W, what up? Um, back after a feedback hiatus. I hope I post regularly from now on. So ideally, you'll start recognizing my name soon enough. Oh, I already do. I think you're the only Sam. Yeah, we have a few Ryans. Uh, a few of some of the other names. <laughs> I'm not gonna start naming everybody, uh, but uh, I think the only Sam. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, so, to the point, I am focusing 100% on improving my anatomy right now. These images are reflective of my current level. What should I do from here to get better? If you're back, so much appreciated. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So. So yeah, you're starting. I mean, you're at a, you're at a good spot. You're at a really good spot. Um, <clears throat> love the issues that I see here on this guy, for example. Um, torso looks great. It's not really gonna be in the torso too much, um, but a little bit. Like maybe maintaining some of the volumes here. Like that would probably stick out some more here. Shoulder would be kind of behind it. Uh, it's in terms of the muscles. Um, just the limbs in general, just the anatomy in general, really thinking of the of the, the, the different parts as volumes, you know, so you can have like one volume in front of the other volume. So like this is the chest and that's the shoulder, really making you feel like it's one behind the other. Uh, and then here, the uh, the hip, the hip area, I definitely would uh, would study that some more. That's a lot weaker here. Like you can almost tell this. Like you understand, you're you got this, you got this, you got this, and it's like, what, 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 how is that all attached? Um, it's like drawing the hips and drawing all the different muscles here: tensor facial lata, iliotibial band on the side of the leg, vastus medialis, and different glutes here: gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Um, so you know, just. Focusing a little bit more on the hip area, because I think that's that's more of a weakness. Um, uh, 
And then the legs, the legs, I think, like, you understand the structure of the muscle, but it's going to be more like what this looks like from different angles. So, like, legs from the side, uh, on the inside of the leg, like, the outside of the leg, legs from the back. Um, like, if you can draw a leg, but, like, a leg rotation, that would be, like, a really, really good practice. In the front, three-quarter, like this, like, the different angles. Would really help you understand the structure better. Um, yeah, and then uh, feet and hands definitely a weaker point. So focus on that a little bit more. Because uh, cause a, a so so body. With great hands and great feet is better in my opinion than a great body with with bad hands and bad feet. These are pretty good though. These feet. <clears throat> I mean your hands not bad, but they're they're a little bit they lack a little bit of the structure than the rest that, that the rest tends to have a bit more the rest of the body um that guy here is pretty good pretty damn good yeah the the legs here would probably have a little bit more meat on the inside um, the legs are usually a lot a lot uh, uh wider from the side than it is from the front like from the front it looks narrower when you look at it from the side it looks wider so if you see the leg more from the side view here Seeing the inside of the leg, then that's going to be bigger. Because overall, you know, the leg starts thick and it kind of tapers down all the way to the knee. Not evenly, but it's thicker at the base of the leg, like here. Always thicker here. And then it gets smaller and smaller. So if that's not the case, you know, kind of if it goes in and then out again, then you're like, mm, strange looking. That's unusual. Thick. Taper down. And um, some perspective issues. Oh, not perspective, excuse me, yeah, proportion issues. Like this one here. Uh, like the length of this here. And that's why. Uh, construct. 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 Everything, all the time. Like whatever she's, whatever she's about here. Torso, uh, stomach, and then going to the hips, and then draw those legs as cylinders. Separate layer first, leg number one. Going to that direction here. Towards the foot. Um, and then, and then the other leg, so where does that start? Something right next to it, probably. Make sure there's enough space in the middle here. The crotch. And then that leg goes where? Underneath here. But just making sure that's the same length. You know, like you're just dealing with cylinders now, so it's a lot easier to spot, to spot the length differences. That's the side of the leg. Side of the leg on that side, that's the length. Making sure those two lines are about the same same length. And then you draw. And then you kind of close the lines and draw the you know, draw the details. This one here, a little too long compared to this one here. And the gesture also. This one here, a little like all your characters are pretty stiff. So gesture is gonna help you uh yeah, just take in a lot of more different poses. Uh and use references that you'll use that you're more likely to to use later. All right, so uh maybe I've told you that before. I feel like I I'm saying this quite often, but uh 
like yeah, like standing poses, maybe simple, uh, simple sitting poses, uh, but mostly standing poses that you'll usually use when drawing characters. Like nothing too crazy, you know, like somebody like crouching in the ball, in the ball, probably not gonna draw that too often, so not really worth it to practice it as much. But uh, construction, this, 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 this. Then uh, yeah, like your joints also. In general, your joints are, are weaker than the rest. So, like the hips being like just a, a, a combo of joints, right? So the this whole thing, uh, the knees a little bit, just for uh, just for the aesthetic of it, just so that it's like a nice, well structured knee. You have all the components here, but they're not really arranged in in a nice way. Um, not not as realistic as it could be. Uh, same thing with the elbows. Shoulders, I don't think, need as much work, but uh, yeah, wrist, knees, elbows, pelvis. Some gesture drawing, but your pose is a little bit more, a little bit more uh, relaxed. Snap. Oh, there she is. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. How the hell did you sort out the, the shadows in here? Man, that looks really good. Shadow looks pretty damn accurate. Impressive. So, I hope your week was good. I've continued working on this project and I've tried, uh, I've tried doing the light pass. Ambient occlusion pass and intensive background with composition in mind. I definitely had the hardest time with this, uh, this time with the ambient occlusion. So it's my first time doing it. It definitely looks up to me. I really appreciate that. Uh, I played around with various compositions and the one here seemed like the best one so far. I'm not sure about the colors either. I'm thinking of keeping it not that colorful and only, only adding a small amount and keeping mostly dark. Man, that's uh, come a long way. That looks really good. I love the lighting in here is very dramatic. Mm. You know what would make it even more dramatic? That the lights kind of kind of faded from the center. So right here, like she's closest. Uh, she's closer to the the opening. Yes, more lights coming in from here for sure. But uh, but maybe 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 like the tip of the tentacles are a little bit more on the outside, so they're not getting as much. So you can kind of focus the, the attention on her a bit more. Almost like a vignette effect for the, the tentacles. But yes, I am also a big fan of this composition. Uh, just one thing <clears throat> that I think would be easy to fix, but um, like this tentacle here, like touching the side. Uh, no, <laughs> don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Just bring it in a bit. Problem solved. Or just have it go like, go out of the frame. That could solve it too. As long as it just doesn't line up perfectly with the edge, you'll be all good. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the lighting here. I think you did really, really good. So you're talking about ambient occlusion. So this is more the lighting pass. This is the AO, I am guessing. Uh, All right, well, 
Oh, like, uh, yeah, in your case, it's more like, uh, more like what I do, right? So a little bit more of a AO plus the shading, kind of the two together. Uh, if it were just AO, you really don't need to take a look at the, the big picture. It doesn't, doesn't matter almost. You just zoom in and you kind of just like a computer go through the whole thing. So in here you have, and everything that's behind something is going to be darker. Everything that's in front of something is going to be lighter. Every time, every, time, uh, every time you have a hole, it's going to be darker. So let's say here you have a sleeve on the inside of the sleeve, you go like this, contour the thing. Just isolate the inside of the sleeve along. That's not the sleeve, that's it. Uh, somehow my sleeve <laughs> turned into a tag. Like in here, you will have ambient occlusion right behind this this you know this sleeve here is in front of the other one and so the one underneath gets less light as a result you can darken it so that's that here maybe a little bit in between the sleeve itself and the tentacle you know Towards the top here, they're, they're touching, so yes, there might not be a whole lot, but towards the bottom, uh, it's a cylinder after all. Towards the bottom, you might see a little bit of uh, immune occlusion there. Uh, 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 in the arm, like in the corner of the arm here, like you're gonna lose a little bit of light, right? So it's brighter here, brighter there, a little darker here. I mean, that's because of the shadow, but... You would still maybe be able to light there because it's a corner and every corners capture light um so let's say you have two tentacles here which one's in front that one so you select everything else but that the tentacle behind part of that one too not too much of it just the part that's right next to the the other tentacle and then since it's behind you add a little bit of ambient occlusion All right, where, where next? Uh, and then those are like the big details. And then once you're done with that, you could do, you know, with the tentacles, like the little suckers themselves. Like right behind that. Right behind the main body of the tentacle. You get a little bit of ambient occlusion. Here as well. And uh, yeah, and then you do that for the whole thing, right? And it'll start to take shape like this, like a 3D model. But you just have to worry about what's on top of what and then what's close to what so let's say you have a fold you know we've done we've done a lot of what's in front of what now uh but let's say you have uh like a, like a fold like this here so the fold itself will create some of that you know, you'll have some light loss here so again, just try to think of which fold is in front of the other one. Probably this one here slides in, and this one kind of wraps around, so this one wins. Uh, 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 back here, who knows? Let's say the, the top one wins, the bottom one slides underneath. Add a little bit of shadow here. Uh, I mean, those those look mostly flat, so maybe not. Maybe it's gonna be more in the in between here, between the folds. But it's that kind of stuff. So you really don't need to zoom out. You don't need to, to look at the big picture. Just just locally applying this the same uh, the same logic. That's I mean occlusion. Um, yeah. So for the background here, you know, make sure again that uh, that you're using your values in a smart way. So that the background doesn't compete with your character. You want still, even though the background might be real dark, you still want it to have less of a value range than your, your main character that's closer to us. And so you can easily explain that too, because you know there's gonna be maybe a little bit of light in here. So some, some light particles in the air, kind of making the, the overall air of the cave catch some lights. 
so everything that's in the back here could be a little bit brighter not that bright but um and then yeah for colors uh i mean this could be very colorful if you wanted to i would add maybe a little bit more light on the ground here so that the light reaches the bottom And then since you have light reaching the bottom, you could have a little bit of bounce light on, uh, on part of her, on, on the tentacles, you know, so if it's like this, this warm light that comes in, or the, even this cool light that comes in, doesn't matter. Let's say it's cool light that comes in. If it reaches the ground and then the ground is like a, you know, like a warmer, warmer, uh, texture warmer substance like dirt then the bounce light will take up that color and so you can have some some warm bounce light on her uh underneath the the, the tentacles here whatever's facing the ground you might be able to get some of that bounce light to help you reveal kind of the their shape even in, in the darkness But, uh, but yeah, but for something creepy, like something horror, less li uh, less less colors, sometimes better. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's gonna be the intensity. Maybe it'll be more or less, but uh, but the colors themselves will still be there. So if you want to make them more or less vibrant, that's that's up to you. But. Uh... Man, I'm excited to see to see your progress on this. That looks super cool, man. And I think just like adjusting the light a little bit like this makes a big difference. Just makes it a lot more moody. So, anyways, well, that helps you, man. Really, really cool. Really nicely coming together. Uh, Sammy, oh, there we go. We have two Sams. That's you're the one I was th thinking about. I'm getting my Sams confused. Shame on me. <laughs> Keep it natty. Hope oh, you are as well. So I'm gonna be real as I'm typing this. I'm very drunk. <laughs> Going back to my feedback from last week. I've taken the time to do some portrait studies, then did a more in-depth version uh, of one of them. Comparing the first portrait I did a few weeks before joining art school. Pink Elf, I'd say that this is an improvement. Oh. Mm. I shall continue onwards with my portrait studies for the week, uh, for the next feedback. Any thoughts? Uh -huh. so there we go. That's a good, uh, really good reference. Nice lighting in here. Nice subtle, subtle, uh, subtle colors. Very nice. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. I mean, that's those are nice colors. Just the structure, the structure is not as as there <laughs> as this one is. Uh, yeah, that's good. Like the the main tip I would I would give you on the the light uh, the the shading would be to just go a little lighter on it in general. You know, like yours feel a lot more uh, uh, worked than than the reference. Like reference, she's got like silky smooth skin everywhere. 
uh, very, very little information other than uh, like around the nostrils, the that little thing here, uh, around the eyes. But that's about it. Other than that, it's kind of like this porcelain skin everywhere. Uh, whereas yours has a little bit more, a lot more of that that texture. Um, it tends to make her look older, if anything. So I would just smooth out the baloney out of this nice soft brush. Maybe that has a little bit of texture. Like this one here that I'm using. And smooth away. Because, um, yeah, with female faces, um, I mean, with faces in general, less is usually more. The more detail you have, the more brush strokes, you know, visible brush strokes you have, the more likely it is to look like an older person. Because like, if you don't blend perfectly well, like, you'll, you'll leave, like, a, like, streaks, and that can look like wrinkles. Nobody likes wrinkles. Trust me, look at this. Darker in our hair. Subtle, subtle, subtle. Subtlety is the name of the game. Even up here, that's a little too much. Like you, you spotted it well, but just go ahead very gently. If you press too hard, it's gonna explode. Gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Ah, damn it. Don't have this mess everywhere. What is the point then? So, yeah, let's see what, uh, what soft shading does. But the structure of the face, pretty, pretty nice. You know, it's a, a little bit more cartoony than than the model herself. Like she's got you know, smaller eyes in reality, uh, a little bit more of a chin. <laughs> um, and then actually the shading. Let's let's uh, tweak the shading for the nose too, because it makes her nose feel 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 a lot more prominent than it is in reality. Like here, it's uh, it's almost like a, a continuous shading. You only see the shadow on this side. Um, so let's try that. It looks a little darker up here. Let's add a little bit of shadow. And then, yeah, the side of the nose here. Let's smooth this out. it on that side. And look at the nostril. You only can see the nostril because of the shadow that they create, not because they're they're shading themselves. So, so like shade the shade, shade, uh, shade the nostrils as if they weren't even there. Flat, flat, flat. And then go in. Isolate them by just drawing the shadows that they create. Soft shading mm. makes all the difference. So keep that in mind. Less is more, and because uh, yeah, because your face structure. I mean, your face structure looks way worse like this, and it, it's the same. It's just the shading made it worse. 
So smoother shading, uh, face structures, pretty damn good. I would say maybe like a, maybe the eyes a little too, little too big, uh, a little too far apart. And like maybe a little too bright, you know, like if you look at the, the white of her eyes, I mean, it's darker than her hair. So, you know, darker than that. That's dark and not. Otherwise, they, the eyes will tend to look a little bit uh, radioactive. So light blue, light, very light uh, purple, light blue. Usually that's the, the color of the eyeball because the, the, the environment is blue. You know, this, it's sky everywhere. Uh, it will be white if it's di under direct sunlight, but but in this case, it isn't. Uh, so usually that's going to be the color for it. Very light purple or very light blue. Yeah, and then tone down the sparkle everywhere else as well. Looks more lifelike. Um, so yeah, with those things in mind, uh, I would uh, I would keep keep going. Some some more portraits. These are getting good, man. Yes, the resistance. <laughs> Laura's. Uh, right. I did spend some time to work on my WE fan art again and change the following. Fix the shape of his right arm. Right arm. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, he got a little bit more. A little bit more. He's packing a little bit more muscles. Uh, change the size of the knuckles of the hands. Mm. Yeah, that hand looks good. Change the details in the hair. I like, I like, I like. Yes, and like brighter also, so we can see the see the haircut better. <laughs> yes, I'm not gonna say it, but yes. Uh, change the lighting of the background a bit and added some random patterns to make it more interesting. I'm a little unsure if the shading is on, uh, if the shading on the arm, on the right arm is correct, especially on his elbow. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, right. <laughs> Bad boy. Batman Dabi. It's up to no good. Laura, that's way better. I know you're sleeping right now, but uh, but you did good. Those are great improvements. It reads a lot better now. Yay. All right, shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. What is it with that shoulder that it's still bugging me? Maybe, I think it's just not wide enough. He's got pretty wide shoulder, like that's that's a wide shoulder, wide shoulder boy. So I feel like this other shoulder here. It's not. It's not carrying its own weight. Um. Yeah. Maybe even yeah, something like that. I think might work better. So just making everything thicker. Not really moving anything, just pushing the shoulder out and uh, making the forearm a little bit uh, a little bit thicker as well. Because forearm like this can be normal, but then you squish it and suddenly it becomes like quite wide. Can't see anything like this, <laughs> but um, but yeah, when you're pressing your forearm muscles against your bicep, you know it's kind of like two balls coming together and like, whoop, and then they turn into like pancakes instead and get wider. So. That feels more like like what he would have here in reality. Uh, and then can you see the? Would he be able to see? The, 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 the elbow. I 
Maybe I'll do something with the rest too. It feels weird that it's like straight up like this. Probably would want to like maybe adjust it. Um, uh, like my shirt. Oh brother. Sick shirt, bro. Mm, yeah, probably not too much. Not much more than what you have already. So maybe a little pointier. Yeah, so I would think maybe, maybe. Let's go towards his neck instead and then have a band. Oops. No, no, no. At the wrists. Yeah, I still feel like there's too much of a gap in between the fingers. Like the thong, the 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 thong can, um, the thong can can definitely deform. You know, it's more squishy than than the fingers are. Go back in time, see if that made any difference. Oh, I just made it worse. Definitely does feel a bit more natural. Maybe the shoulder. <laughs> Something like that. It's minor though. But uh but I feel like yeah. Like now that you that you worked on the arm, you know, it feels like this is way too skinny. Uh, but still feels too skinny if I look back at the what you had after. I think that's a big step up. Feel like he's he's uh, he's big enough. He's he's uh, he's muscular enough that uh, yeah the the hand the, the the entire arm should be a little bit a little, a little bigger, shoulder included. And then and then and then and then be beyond that. One more thing. Uh, the lighting is great on on the whole thing here. Uh, it looks cool in the back. But the main light source, you know, the one that's that's lighting up kind of the, the torso here. Um, I think if you introduce a little bit of, I mean, if you introduce sh uh, shadows, would would help nicely. I think, like the arm here, could be covering part uh, the chest, so that the light wouldn't reach. Wouldn't reach. Something like that, maybe. Maybe. The black, like the burnt skin, feels pretty, pretty even lit. Even though it's clearly brighter here with the backlight, like the, the light in the front here, like it it brightens up a lot the chest, but not so much this area. So I think maybe it's the only disconnect left. Uh, like brighten that up along with it. Doesn't look too hot, but um, yeah, that I think that extra lights would add something. Maybe not as much. Maybe it's more subtle, but uh, but so that there's a difference between uh between the area maybe down here where it's not getting as much lights and the area here that's that's being lit directly. And then maybe. Maybe some of that in the hair as well.
something like that. Uh, it's a little bit of lighting, a little bit of anatomy. What the hell's Laura? He looks quite dashing. And uh, and there we have it. That is uh, a wrap this week. So uh, <laughs> it took a little bit longer on those those last few ones. Seven hours it is. Um, hope that was helpful. Uh, I had a good time. A lot of really really cool stuff today. Um, and and a lot of progress as always. So I'm really really happy. And um, thank you guys uh, if you if you hung out a little bit or. A lot of bits. Uh, always appreciate the good company. And um, hope you have a good creative week ahead of you. There you go, Vika, still here. You crazy bastards, all of you. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate. And um, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Good creative week ahead of you. Did I just say this already? Anyways, uh, Leslie too. I will see you for more art feedback next week. So peace out guys, Peyton too. Have a good, uh, have a good one guys. Bye bye.